Rivalries and mixed martial arts go hand in hand. One fighter's glory is another fighter's dream. Some are equipped with experience and determination proven over time. Others are war-tested soldiers who thrive under even the most intense of pressures. He has it! Tonight, from the great wide north, it won't just be two middleweight contenders looking to advance their careers. National pride is at stake as two coaches become competitors. Absolutely Teammates become enemies. Contenders will rise. Pretenders will fall. If Michael Bisping shows up thinking he's going to get an easy win, he's going to wake up looking at the lights. He's just a wannabe, and I can't stand the guy. I don't like him. I don't respect him. Tonight, in Quebec City, their taunts become battle cries, and their fists do the talking. This is UFC Fight Night. Bisping versus Kennedy. And it starts right now. An absolute privilege to be in the building here tonight. We are live in Quebec City, Quebec, Canada. It is UFC Fight Night. Bisping versus Kennedy here on Fox Sports 1. We also point out closed captioning is available for tonight's telecast as the Octagon opens for business in Quebec City for the very first time. And with that, we welcome you live inside the arena. John Anik alongside the three-time World UFC title challenger, Kenny Florian. A whole lot of excitement surrounding our main event here tonight, and rightfully so. In Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy, not only do you have two very talented fighters, but two guys who are not afraid to speak their minds. Yeah. But tonight, it is about actions, and the winner figures to take a quantum leap forward here at 185 pounds. Yeah, these guys are some of the top uh, middleweights in the world. They both want to crack at that at that belt that Weidman has. Uh, Michael Bisping has been around the game for a long time. He's been a top middleweight, and he does a lot of things that people don't really appreciate, and it really comes in the way of footwork and range. He's a tough guy to take down, and if you do take him down, he gets right back to his feet, John. And on the other side, Tim Kennedy in search of what would be the biggest win of his mixed martial arts career. Well, everybody knows about the grinding style of Tim Kennedy, but what Tim Kennedy showed in his last fight against Javier Natal is knockout power. This is a guy who is a world-class grappler, but now he's showing that he has knockout power, and that is something that Bisping is going to have to watch out for, especially in the form of that left hook of Tim Kennedy. And you can make the argument that the top 10 in the UFC's middleweight division has never been healthier. you got to think our main eventers are acutely aware of the stakes here tonight at 185 pounds. Tonight is also the finale of the Ultimate Fighter Nations. That means the spotlight shines on the rival coaches, Canada's Patrick Cote and Australia's Kyle Noak. I, I think we're going to have a fun fight between yeah. Noak and Cote. Uh, Cote has fought everybody in the middleweight division. Uh, he has fought for the belt at 185 pounds. Uh, and Cote now has found himself in a new division at 185. 70 pounds and has the ability to really move up the rankings here. This is a very important fight. We know how stacked 170 pounds has been for so long, and he needs this. Kyle Noak, very well rounded. He has knockout power. He can finish you on the ground, and he is huge for the weight class. When these two went eye to eye yesterday, yeah. I was very impressed with the size and length of Kyle Noak. And you know, despite the 19 month layoff for Kyle Noak, because he trains at Jackson Winkle Johnson, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and given how busy that camp is right now over yeah. these last few months, he feels like he is more than ready, and ring rust will not be an issue. And that's not all. We will also crown two new Ultimate Fighter winners. It was the Ultimate Fighter Nations, Canada versus Australia. And the final matchups, Kenny, are clearly Canadian in the welterweight division. Chad Laprise takes on Olivier Aubin Mercier. Yeah, it was a Canadian sweep. Uh, yeah. And for these guys, uh, at 170 pounds, uh, Laprise is very impressive. An excellent counter striker, has knockout power. And Olivier Aubin Mercier is an excellent grappler. If he gets you on your back, many times you don't leave without getting tapped out. And of course, we have the middleweight final, Elias Theodoro against Sheldon Westcott, two guys that are very similar 
Uh, two very athletic guys at 185 pounds, both excellent grapplers. You know, may we see their wrestling cancel each other out? We may get a, a brawl on the feet here. A huge opportunity for those four Canadian gentlemen here tonight. All right, let's get to the rules of the Octagon. Three judges score the bout. The bout duration is three five-minute rounds. And for championship fights and main events, we go five five-minute rounds. A 10-point must scoring system is in effect, with the round winner gaining 10 points, his or her opponent nine or less. And scoring is based on effective striking, grappling, aggression, and octagon control. Well, Fox Sports won the place to be for fight fans on Wednesday nights. Thank you for being here. It's UFC Fight Night. Bisping versus Kennedy. We are live in Quebec City. And a lot of fire and venom at Tuesday's weigh-in between Akira Khorasani and Dustin Poirier. Huge opportunity for Khorasani as he tries to break into the top ten here tonight against the established contender. Initially remembered for his polarizing run on season 14 of The Ultimate Fighter, Akira Khorasani has since created a different impression for himself. That of a legitimate threat in the featherweight division with a 3-0 UFC record following his stint on the show. Meantime, moving ever closer to a shot at the featherweight title, Louisiana native Dustin Poirier is getting sharper with each win, evident in his victories over Eric Koch and Diego Brandao. That type of improvement could be a bad omen for Khorasani, but the New York-based Swede has every confidence that he will be the better fighter here tonight. Coming up next, Akira Khorasani squares off against Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Good to have you with us. It's UFC Fight Night. This is Fox Sports 1. Well, the UFC's featherweight division has never been stronger. We get to the tail of the tape for this one. Dustin Poirier still just 25, taking on the 31-year-old Akira Khorasani. One inch the difference in height, but something to watch. A five-inch reach advantage for the Louisiana native Dustin the Diamond Poirier. To get us started with the introductions, here's Bruce Buffer. Madame, Monsieur, Bonjour, Quebec! Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from Quebec City, Quebec, Canada for UFC Fight Night. And now, this fight is three rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, an Akira Do fighter holding a professional record. 14 wins, four losses. He stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of New York, New York, USA, by way of Luton, Sweden, Akira Korosani! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record. 15 wins, 3 losses. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, by way of Lafayette, Louisiana, USA, Dustin the Diamond Poirier! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Dan Mugliata. So Dan Mergliata draws the opening Simon here on the main card. Chrissy Blair to get us going in round one of a possible three in the UFC's okay, featherweight yes, division. Yes, go, Dustin fight. Poirier against the six to one underdog Akira Khorasani. The fight clock is brought to you by Transcendence from Warner Brothers Pictures and Theaters Friday rated PG-13. And you know, you don't always get options when picking fights in the UFC. Akira Khorasani circumstantially was presented with three, and he chose the only guy in the top 10, it was Dustin Poirier, can completely change the complexion of his UFC career if he can spring the upset here tonight. Yeah, you gotta love that. You know, a lot of fighters would choose the path of least resistance, not the case for Akira Khorasani. He's going big game hunting in Dustin Poirier. And the same goes for Poirier. He didn't have to take this fight sure. either. I mean, he could have waited and you know, waiting for the, the higher ranked guys, but no, he wants the challenge as well. Corasani bringing in some southpaws to help prepare for Dustin Poirier here tonight. Corasani's been looking for that overhand right early and often. And that's the shot you gotta watch out for as a southpaw. Poirier just 25 years old as he snaps off the jab there. And already with seven UFC wins to his credit. 
Yeah, that was a nice little combination on the inside from Poria Corsani. Clinches up here, up against the cage. Nice turn from Poirier. The jab is there for Poirier. Yeah, Poirier needs to stay patient. Beautiful jab there from Poirier. So the straight left and the jab had been there early on here for Dustin Poirier. Corisani winding up on the right hand. He lands with the left. Oh! Poirier's not getting paid. He's getting too impatient there. He's walking into stuff. Corisani's got some power. Yeah, He's hurting Poirier the straight here. right, yeah. So Corisani getting confident here in the early going. Poirier is still hurt, John. Corisani has hurt Poirier a few times. I'm not sure he's fully there right now. Nice spinning kick there, but just dust the right arm of Dustin Poirier. You know, sometimes when you have a step up in the level of competition, it can bring out the best in fighters. And a couple minutes into this one, it is bringing out the best in Akira Corisani. Yeah, and what's the motivation like for Poirier? Did he come out too lackadaisical here against Kira Corisani? Poirier still landing at a pretty decent clip in his own right here through three minutes. Corisani mixing it up nicely, going to the body and then upstairs, and he lands another right up top. Corisani showing some beautiful footwork here, circling away from that power. He's circling to the proper side. He's been lining up, and look at this. Switch of the stance from Poirier. He landed a beautiful left hand against Corisani that backed him up. And these guys are officially going at it now. 90 seconds to go in the first round. And Poirier really starting to improve upon the accuracy now. Oh, the uppercut just misses. And they're slugging it out. Beautiful trade there for both men. Corisani landed a big run. The chins of both men holding up well as we hit the one minute mark in what has been an entertaining first round of this one. I like what Poirier's doing. He's cutting off the cage. He's, sw he's switching his stances. He's going from southpaw into righty, and it's lining up his right hand now. The best submission in the arsenal of Dustin Poirier is his Darce choke, and he's setting it up right now. Corsani is starting to counter it already, already aware of the positioning of Poirier. Could he switch it into a Peruvian necktie? Here he is. Corsani's in big time trouble with 30 seconds to go in the first. Haven't he could go out. Haven't seen a lot of these completed in the UFC. Man, Corsani's in big trouble here. Poirier needs to put pressure with that right leg. He's kicking it up to the sky. He needs to put it down. And now Corsani gets out. Wow, Corsani's out of it and lands a big knee, and he's bleeding. So Corsani has been opened up, and Poirier continues to land.
So that first round, a tough act to follow. The message in the corner of Dustin Poirier was, let's get one takedown. Put him against the cage, try to get one takedown and maybe alter the landscape of this one a little bit. But Corisani hanging tough against one of the better featherweights on the planet in Dustin Poirier. Yeah, Poirier, Poirier is excellent on the mat. And you'd think he'd have the advantage on the feet with his range, but Corisani's footwork and feints and combinations have been working extremely well for him. Poirier almost had him with a couple of beautiful submissions. Oh, big uppercut there for Poirier. Oh, Corisani's in a world of pain here. This one might be done. Dustin That's Poirier, it. another finish. Poirier's pressure, this kid gets stronger as the fight goes on. He started to set up his combinations. It looked like it was an uppercut that really hurt Akira Khorasani. These guys picked up where they left off in the first. Beautiful uppercut from Poirier. Look at the switching of the stances up against the cage. That's beautiful stuff. Lovely uppercut there. And he switches the stance, which cuts off the cage. Not a lot of fighters doing that. That is beautiful from Dustin Poirier. Those are the little things that you can only appreciate in those replays. Well, you know, Dustin Poirier doesn't discriminate when it comes to finishing fights. We'll get to the official decision and talk to Poirier after this. All right, back inside the wild arena here in Quebec City. It's UFC Fight Night. Bisping versus Kennedy on Fox Sports 1. All right, we go inside the octagon for the official decision. Here's Bruce Buffer. Shit, I wouldn't have picked him. But hey, I love you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliano is called to stop in this contest at 42 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by TKO, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. All right, I'm here with your winner. He is Dustin Poirier. A lot of mutual respect, of course, between you and Akira Khorasani. Congratulations with that win. You now hold the record for the most wins in UFC featherweight history with eight. Uh, interesting fight there in the first round, at least. He appeared to touch you a few times, but you got him in the second. How hurt were you in that opening stanza? Uh, I'm not sure what he hit me with, but he, he hit me with something, and I was definitely hurt pretty bad. I heard his corners yelling, he's hurt, he's hurt, and I just tried to have my best poker face, you know. Uh, I, I thought he was going to try to come in for the kill. I was going to load up my left elbow, but... Uh, he didn't press too hard, and I recovered pretty quickly. You certainly did, and the second round was all you. We're going to have you take us through the finishing sequence, if you would. The uppercut set up the fight ending combination. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm watching it right now. Uh, cross, step into the uppercut. It looks like it landed right on his nose. I know he just had nose surgery, and uh, he just told me just now, he said, uh, you broke my nose with the uppercut. So uh, you can tell he wasn't re really that rock from the uppercut, but he felt the pain, I guess. He knew his nose was broke. He goes down. And I do my job, man. So a lot of the guys in the top 10 were tied up. You're ranked sixth in the world. You accept this fight. What was your mentality coming in that perhaps you had more to lose than gain in this fight? You know, man, I, I say it till I'm blue in the face. Uh, I'm not here to pick fights. My job is to fight. When these guys tell me who I'm fighting, I lace up my gloves and I go to work. You know, um, I'm a fighter, man. And I got a lot of fights ahead of me. And, the, and my, my better fights are still ahead of me. And uh, I'm getting better and I'm having a blast, man. That was fun. That first round was fun. <laughs> Scary to think how good you can be. 25 years old, already eight wins in the UFC, and few bigger than that one here tonight. No doubt bigger fights await. Congratulations on a huge performance here tonight. Your winner, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Dustin Poirier is definitely a fighter. Looked phenomenal out there. Really had to battle through some adversity in the first round. Came back and got the win by knockout. And for Akira Khorasani, who took this fight, I gotta say, even in defeat, his stock went up. And Dustin Poirier's 75% finishing rate goes up as well. He passes Chad Mendez for the most wins in UFC featherweight history. All right, later tonight, star power. Michael Bisping has 14 UFC wins, but what he truly covets is a shot at the middleweight championship. Well, to get there, he must first get through the perennial tough out, the American Tim Kennedy. Kennedy 2-0 out of the shoot to begin his UFC career. He asked for this fight, he got it. Kennedy and Bisping still to come later in our main event.
But coming up next, it's the Ultimate Fighter Nation's welterweight final. Chad LaPreeze was Patrick Cote's top pick to run the table. Now, the final hurdle, his Team Canada teammate and fellow unbeaten, Olivier Aubin-Mercier. A six-figure UFC contract on the line after this. This is UFC Fight Night. Beautiful Quebec here in the St. Lawrence River Valley and tonight, this fine city plays host to the Octagon for the first time. And later tonight after our main event, it's an all new season of the Ultimate Fighter as bitter rivals take over to coach the next generation of UFC fighters. The Ultimate Fighter, Team Edgar versus Team Penn begins next, only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. All right, time now to reveal the bonus winners for the Ultimate Fighter Nations. The fight of the season took place fairly early on. It was the quarterfinal between Team Australia's Chris Indich and Team Canada's Chad LaPreeze. And this one really had it all. Indich hung in there tough, as he is prone to do, and at times mounted some offense of his own, but LaPreeze was the victor here. He put it on Indich early and often. Indich and LaPreeze combined for the fight of the season and each take home an extra 25 large. And LaPreeze actually doubled up in the bonus department. His show-stopping semi-final knockout of fellow Canadian Cajun Johnson held up as one of the performances of the season and also landed LaPreeze in the final. Chad LaPreeze with style points takes home another $25,000. Of course, the big prize is what is up for grabs here in Quebec City tonight. All right, so it has all come down to this. Olivier Aubin Mercier and Chad LaPreeze have survived the Ultimate Fighter gauntlet at stake tonight. A long-term contract with the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Mon nom est Olivier Aubin Mercier. Je suis de Montréal. Je m'entraîne au H2O MMA et Tristar. Je pense que le monde du Québec a besoin d'un nouveau héros depuis que Georges saint pierre est parti, a pris sa retraite. Peut-être qu'il voit en moi celui qui va le remplacer. Je crois que ma famille est vraiment fière de moi. J'ai toujours rêvé de pouvoir vivre ma vie en faisant qu ce que j'aime. Être un père, c'est quelque chose qui m'a changé. Donc quand j'ai ma fille, j'essaie toujours de faire beaucoup d'activités, d'être vraiment très actif. Je veux que sa vie soit quelque chose d'actif, donc pas rester nécessairement devant la télévision ou devant l'ordinateur. Un petit peu. Un petit peu. <rire> Je viens à peu près chaque jour ici au H2O euh, m'entraîner avec, euh, avec l'équipe de Jiu-Jitsu, justement pour améliorer mes techniques, mes soumissions. Je pense que c'est une grosse partie de, de mon jeu. Je pense que qu ce que Chad va essayer de faire, c'est de rester debout, d'éviter les takedowns, puis de ne pas aller au sol. Donc moi, ça va être l'opposé que je vais essayer de faire. Je pense qu'il sait que je suis meilleur que lui au sol, que je suis meilleur que lui en lutte, puis euh, que ma, mon debout ici, il ne faut pas sous-estimer euh, dans cette, euh, cette partie-là. Chad, que ce soir, mon rêve va donner réalité. My name is Chad, the disciple of Prees. I'm 27 years old. I've lived in London here for about three years now. It's a beautiful place to live. I've been married for five and a half years to my beautiful wife, Emily. She's definitely my rock, and uh, without her, I definitely wouldn't be in the sport. She's the one who uh, told me to quit my job. We end up selling our house without moving up here with pretty much nothing. I'm still a fighter, but first and foremost, I'm a husband to her. She's one who uh, always believed in me, and uh, now my uh, dreams are coming true. This is one of the top gyms in the country. It's called Adrenaline Training Center. It's uh, formerly Team Tompkins. I think we got like six guys here who fight in the UFC. Great coaching staff here, great training partners, and I'm super blessed to uh, call this my home gym. Some of my teammates, they started calling me the disciple because I'm a Christian. It just kind of stuck. Once I'm done fighting, when I'm retired, I want to open up a fight church. Uh, so I'm going to become a pastor. I'm going to have a gym where guys can come in and uh, learn about God and train in mixed martial arts as well. Fighting Olivia, you know, he's he's a very skilled guy. I know exactly what he's going to try to do in this fight. He's going to try to get me up against the fence to uh, take me down and uh, try to submit me. So it's uh, my job to stop that. Get out there, set a pace on him early, and get right in his face. And uh, definitely let him know that uh, he's in for a fight. I have to stick and move. Hit him and hit him early. Don't let him get some momentum swinging. Olivia, it's just going to be business. We were friends before. We'll definitely be friends after. I have to be the ultimate fighter. This is my dream to fight in the UFC. There's not a chance that I will lose. Coming up next, the first of 
two Ultimate Fighter Finals as Olivier Aubin Mercier takes on Chad, the Disciple of Dreams. The fellow unbeaten 25-year-old Olivier Aubin Mercier, one inch is the difference in height, a slight half-inch reach advantage with the slight favorite Olivier Aubin Mercier. These two men now 15 minutes or fewer away from joining the UFC on a more full-time basis. All right, we are ready for the Ultimate Fighter Nation's welterweight final, and so is the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight will determine who will be the welterweight winner of the Ultimate Fighter Nations. This fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record. Five wins, no losses. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 169 pounds. Fighting out of St. Bruno de Montarville, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Olivier Aubameyang! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a striker, holding a professional record, eight wins, no losses. He stands five feet ten inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of London, Ontario, Canada, Chad, the Disciple And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Levine. So Eve Levine, the third man in the octagon for this one. Quebec versus Ontario. So the fans here showering some booze upon that man, Chad Laprise, as he takes on Olivier Aubin Mercier. They touch him up, and we are underway. The fight clock is brought to you by Transcendence from Warner Brothers Pictures in theaters Friday, rated PG-13. Mercier, the southpaw going high with the kick. It'll be interesting to see what kind of improvements he's made when it comes to his striking as Laprise lands on the inside with the leg kick. It was a dominant season for the Canadians on the Ultimate Fighter. They are guaranteed to have two winners here tonight. You can see Laprise with a lot of lateral movement. Obviously anticipating that clinch and that takedown of Mercier. You can hear his corner say, keep moving. Olivier, so good in that clinch position and so good when he gets on top on the mat. And continues to pepper the inside of that lead leg of Obama Mercier. And where Obama Mercier really has to worry is with that right hand counter. Laprise will step off to his left and throw that right hand down the middle. He's so good at finding angles and really has the makings of a knockout artist. First takedown attempt for Obama Mercier. Laprise able to thwart it, but still Obama Mercier able to maintain connection. And Laprise has already been opened up under that left eye. Or so it appears. And the only chance raining down here in Quebec City. And already you see some improvements in the striking game of Obama Mercier, at least when it comes to his confidence. Yes, definitely sees more fluid. He's not as stiff out there. But clearly the striking advantage goes to Laprise so far. Just very fluid. Fighting oh. angles. Big right hand. That's that right hand we were talking about. Partially blocked, but still able to get through. And you see the battle for that left leg. It's Laprise who keeps that left foot on the outside of, of Olivier's lead right leg. And that allows him to land that right hand and get the angle. He just landed a nice short right hand. Mercier's okay. And Kenny, I know you were in this spot back in 2005. You really can feel the tension in the building given the stakes here. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure the fighters do as well. Uh, definitely a high pressure situation here for both of these guys. A lot at stake. The biggest crowd that they've fought in front of by far. Oh. And what Mercier needs to do is put his punches together in combination 
to set up that takedown right there. And Lapriz disrespecting that attempt. A nice sprawl in defense of the takedown for Chad Lapriz, and then comes out of it with a combination. Lapriz, arguably the best striker in either division on the Ultimate Fighter Nation. Certainly the best jab I saw on the show and has that head on a constant swivel. Yes, that, Which, that was clear, John, for sure. I tell you, though, these do not look like a couple of rookies. You understand why they both come in undefeated in their mixed martial arts careers. No doubt, both high level in their own way. Mercier as the grappler and Laprise as the striker. Nicely done to the body there by Obama Mercier. Laprise with a speed advantage. Olivia just not able to really find his range. Nice the left hand there from Obama Mercier. But just a lot of movement from Laprise. He's making Mercier really work out there. Mercier doing a nice job backing up out of the way of that combination. Laprise though very opportunistic and very, very active. Laprise pressing forward, nicely done with the right hand on the button. that jab and commit right the inside's still there stay smart you're fighting smart you're winning right deep breath in through the nose deep breath in through the nose good kick to the inside the inside's there right one five two one two to the body right that two to the body's there yes you're staying no you faint, but when you hit him, fucking hit him. Sorry, hit him, okay? Let's do it. Hit him hard. You're hitting him hard. That's it. You're better than this guy. Don't give up on the wrestling, okay? Thank you, sir. All right, back to live action now. Round two in our Ultimate Fighter Nation's welterweight final. Chad Laprise and Olivier Obama Mercier. Both corners in that break asking for commitment from their fighters. Look at that sharp striking from Laprise. Certainly committed on the right hand there. And as we cross that 22nd mark in round two, this is the longest that Olivier Obama-Mercier has gone in a professional fight. He did go the distance in his quarterfinal win on the show, but uncharted territory for him, at least when it comes to pro competition. Laprise just not offering a target, a stationary target for Mercier. A lot of lateral movement. There's a nice shot from Obama Mercier. He's in on a single now. This is the deepest shot that we've seen from him. And he has, he has a lift going. He may have locked hands. He has. He's got it behind the butt of Laprise. Can he finish it? He does. So a huge swing there for Olivier Obama-Mercier, and now we'll see what Chad Laprise can do after being planted on his back. Now this is where Mercier does his best work, but Laprise is working on a good get-up here. He just sat into a guillotine. Laprise is on top, and he's avoided it. And you got to admire the desperation of Chad Laprise to get out of harm's way and to do so quickly. Smart fighter, and he just ripped the body of Mercier with a right hand. Man, oh man, that body shot was brutal. 
Win or lose tonight, Shad LaPriest has said he plans an immediate drop down to his natural weight class of 155 pounds. Most expected, Obama Mercier will do the same. But it was a big advantage for LaPriest on the show not to have to cut a lot of weight. Said when he got bored in the house, he just ate. Not a luxury for a lot of guys. Yeah, and that takes its toll on you, especially throughout that season, John, making weight we, uh, week, week in and week out. It is a tough balancing act, and it can really be an advantage for the lighter guys. Quick check on the clock by LaPreeze. Conditioning has never been an issue for either guy. Obama Mercier lands to the body. Looks like Obama Mercier starting to find his range with his left hand, his jab. And that left kick to the body has been working for him against LaPreeze. There is it again. Nice left hand. Perhaps the best land of the fight there for Obama Mercier. Nice body shot for LaPreeze. Nothing at all flat-footed about the striking approach for Chad LaPreeze. He is constantly getting his head off of that center line. Constantly moving. It's beautiful to watch, John, just his rhythm. The footwork, the angles that he's creating for himself, the feints, and a lot of variety. Able to land the uppercut there, not completely, but it did land. Now, Aubin Mercier is doing something very nice. Oh. He's just keeping it simple there. Big shot from the priest. Sorry. Yeah, pa partially blocked, but... Yeah, he's uh, he's keeping it simple. He's going with the weapons that have been working for him. That left hand, that left kick to the body. He just needs to turn it into a shot here and try to put Laprise back on the mat. Nice jab from Mercier. And given the power of Chad Laprise, kind of hard for Obama Mercier to work his way inside for a potential takedown. Yeah, he definitely is respecting that power, but it's that footwork. Nice little blitz there from LaPreeze. Premiere of the new season of The Ultimate Fighter follows us here on Fox Sports 1. Obama Mercier really needs to look for a reactive shot off that forward motion of LaPreeze. So nice output in that second round for Chad LaPreeze. He's moving forward towards that final horn. Just recover this round, all right? Let's go. You won that round, okay? But you got it. You got to solidify. You got to win this one, okay? Let's go. Breathe. Breathe. Don't forget mixing up. When he's against the cage, you got to shoot, okay? He's very aggressive now, okay? I know, I understand. Keep your hands up. But when he's aggressive, that's a good time to take him down. Make him think the rest of it. You can't just kickbox with him. Right? shots, okay? Stick this jab. Stay smart. Five minutes and it's yours, buddy. Five minutes and it's yours. Five minutes and it's yours. Chad, just keep ahead of him. Keep ahead of him. Stay on the gate. Oh, guys, you're looking beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, back here, ready for our third round. And Kenny, I know Richard Ho's advice for Olivier Obama Mercier in between rounds got your stamp of approval. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he told them you, you got to go for that reactive shot. As the priest goes forward, that's a great time to change levels and take your man down. That's the fastest uh, way to put your opponent on the mat. The priest showing excellent footwork, but you got to catch him as he goes forward. Look at this. Obama Mercier pressuring with the takedown. Not necessarily a reactive shot, but it's a shot and it's a clinch, but LaPreeze isn't having it. Yeah, an unsuccessful shot at that. 
We also remind you, we do have a sudden victory round in place. If the fight goes to a draw after three rounds, we will go to a fourth and deciding round. We will determine a winner one way or the other. Nice left hand there from Mercier, who really needs the pressure. And I would go as far as saying that he might be down oh, two, you know, two rounds to zero here. He needs to go for it. He may need a finish. There's that reactive shot. And using Laprise's aggressiveness against him, Olivier Obamosier with an opportunity here. But Laprise, man, oh, man, athletic as anything and getting back to his feet. Has done such, such a great job of putting the feet on the hip, get right back to his feet. We saw that throughout the season. Anytime he was on his back, he'd always do a great job of scrambling right back to his feet. And he's done it against perhaps the best grappler on, the, on that season. So the defensive wrestling has been there for Chad LaPreeze tonight. And Alvin Mercier just out of range there. down to the body there by Obama Mercier, and he follows up. <laughs> Little slip there for LaPreeze, right back to his feet. Nicely done with the right hook there for Obama Mercier. I know some were surprised to see Chad LaBreeze installed as a slight underdog here tonight, fighting like the favorite here as we approach the two-minute mark in round three. Looks so confident, so smooth on the feet, John. And grappling-wise, he has given Olivier fits on the mat. Beautiful combination there. Yeah, and the left hook to cap it might have stunned Obama Mercier. And look at the awareness, how he circles away from the cage. Just pretty stuff with Laprise, who really looks like a veteran tonight. And he probably wants nothing to do with Obama Mercier's guard. Smart decision there. Ninety seconds to go in this one. The Ultimate Fighter Nation's welterweight final. Big uppercut there. Yeah, nice little leaping uppercut there from. Oh, by Mercier, a little over a minute to go. He's got to go for it here, John. Oh, by Mercier goes to the body, but a one shot here or there may not get it done. Mercier continuing to mess with that left hand. I don't know if it's an injury, a glove issue. Oh, nice spinning attempt there by Laprise. Beautiful spinning back kick there from Laprise. Now a nice blitz. And another one, but you gotta love it. These guys are really going for it at the end of this third round. And Chad LaPreeze especially fighting like the guy who might be down on the scorecards. LaPreeze really going for it, ripping to the body. So the Ultimate Fighter Nation's welterweight final is in the books. Chad LaPreeze putting on a striking clinic. It's a great fight. Great, and, great fight. And clearly Olivier Aubin Mercier experiencing some fatigue as he falls to his back, a guy who has had a lot of first round finishes in his career. And you gotta think those 15 minutes will certainly prove to be valuable experience for him moving forward.
Yeah, Laprise just looked on tonight. Came into the cage very confident, very composed. And his footwork was just beautiful. Beautiful out there, getting angles, lateral movement. And it, it took, and because of that footwork, it took Aubin Marcier so long to get to the clinch and find his range with his strikes. We didn't really see him connect until the end of the second, the end of the third. Pretty stuff. All right, coming up next, we will talk to the winner and present the trophy to the welterweight winner. Stay with us. Live from Quebec City, this is UFC Fight Night, Bisping versus Kennedy on Fox Sports 1. And America's new sports network is the place to turn before every slam, every goal, and every game with America's pregame weeknights at 6 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. All right, the Ultimate Fighter Nation's welterweight final is in the books. Bruce Buffer is inside the octagon. He has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score the contest. 29, 28, Alban Mercier. 29, 28, Laprise. And 30, 27 for the winner by split decision. And now, the welterweight winner of the Ultimate Fighter Nations, Chad, the disciple, Laprise. <laughs> you win the contract with the UFC. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you so much. I congratulate. Gotta feel pretty good to get the congratulations from the UFC president there, the Ultimate Fighter Nations welterweight winner, Chad Laprise. Your coach Patrick Cote said you were his top pick to run the table. You get it done. Uh, can you describe your emotions here in this moment tonight? Words can't even describe what I'm feeling right now. I just want to thank everybody for coming out for the support. It's just truly amazing. I know you expected that your wrestling defense and your grappling defense was gonna be tested here tonight, but I wanna talk about your striking. You were so confident and comfortable from the minute you stepped foot in here tonight. Any nerves in advance of your UFC debut at all? No, I really, really wasn't nervous at all. I, I truly believe that God put me here to be a fighter. You know, I just wanna come out here and showcase my skills. Thanks to Olivier, he's a great opponent. He was super tough, you know. I wanna thank uh, Dr. Faisal, my, my doctor for everything, all my coaches and everybody for the support. So you've said that you have an immediate plan now to drop down to 155 pounds, your natural weight class is, that's still the plan? Whoever Joe Sullivan, Dana White wants me to fight, I'll fight, 170 or 155. As far as your grappling defense, very quickly, uh, were you expectant that you'd be able to thwart his takedowns and keep the fight largely on the feet? I knew that that would be his, his, his biggest strength, as I worked on the most. I was very surprised with the strike, you know, he really threw me off. Well, you stole the show on the season. It continued here tonight. You are the ultimate fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Chad the Disciple Laprise. Chad Laprise getting it done, keeping his record at a perfect 9-0. Looks so sharp against a very dangerous Olivier Aubin Mercier. Was very fit, came in very fit, looked very confident. And you can see that he really wasn't nervous. I mean, what a performance. So Chad Laprise is the man here tonight. And of course, my biggest takeaway, as I mentioned through the fight, was just the confidence, you know? And I think that really bodes well for him moving forward if indeed he drops down to the treacherous waters at 155 pounds. Uh, clearly, though, you would think that's where he belongs, yes? Yeah, I, I think so as well. And I tell you what, based on what I saw tonight, he can go right there and, and compete with a lot of top lightweights. And that's saying a lot considering how tough a division that is. But Laprise has all the skills and all the determination to be out there and uh, be a top fighter. All right, so one Ultimate Fighter winner has been crowned. And straight ahead, it'll be the Ultimate Fighter Nation's middleweight final. Sheldon Westcott stormed through the field with a pair of submission victories. Tonight, though, represents without question his toughest test to date. He squares off with his training partner turned opponent, the unbeaten Elias Theodoro. Also still to come our five round middleweight main event, Michael Bisping returning to action for the first time in just under a year. The American Tim Kennedy charged with welcoming the count back to the octagon. He's got visions of securing the biggest win of his career. Stay with us. Fox Sports 1 as we wrap up the Ultimate Fighter Nations. 
busy stretch for the UFC. Fox UFC Saturday returns with the most exciting network card in UFC history. It all starts this week at 5 p.m. Eastern with the live prelims on Fox Sports 1. Then I turn it over to Fox at 8 p.m. for the main card. The main event will produce the next contender for the heavyweight championship. Travis Brown and Fabricio Verdum set to collide in the heavyweight headliner. In my fights, I didn't need judges. I didn't need referees. At the end of the day, I'm gonna take this into my own hands. I'm gonna dominate, and I'm gonna give you a reason to lose. This is my world, you live in it, and you're in my way. So get out of the way. Travis Brown is a monster. Every time we see him inside the octagon, we see an upgraded version. What you have in Travis Brown is a man who refuses to lose, a man who believes that it is his destiny to one day wear that heavyweight strap. But in front of him stands Fabricio Verdum, an enormous heavyweight with very good stand-up and one of the best ground games in the business. I, I love the fight. This is my life. Travis Brown for me is a big test. The main event, five rounds, maybe I'm knocking him out. His stand-up has looked spectacular. He has much improved Muay Thai, and his ground game is the elite of the elite. This is a must-win fight for both fighters. I, I want to uh, see him in the ground. There's nothing he can do to stop me. The winner will be considered the top contender in the UFC's heavyweight division. He's looking for an excuse to lose, and I'm going to give it to him. Looks like Verdum and I have a date. I'm ready, whenever you are. I'll take you out, let's go. I'm waiting for a quick finish here. Everything is on the line in this bout. Travis Brown! The winner gets Kane Velasquez for the UFC heavyweight title. So huge stakes in that heavyweight main event. You've also got Misha Tate returning to the octagon against Liz Carmouche. And in the lightweight division, a matchup of perennial entertainers Donald Cerrone and Edson Barboza, Brad Tavares, Yoel Romero. You can catch Road to the Octagon all week long as well. Check your local listings. It is the perfect primer for Fox UFC Saturday. So as far as stakes are concerned, they couldn't be a lot higher. Fabricio Verdum, Travis Brown for the right to face the UFC heavyweight champion, Cain Velasquez. Number two against number three. Uh, two big boys, uh, guys that are extremely technical, and guys that don't like to waste time. These guys are finishers, and I think we're going to get a finish in that one. Five rounds of Verdun versus Brown. That is going to be insane. Uh, you know, Brown has found a tremendous counter. The guys are trying to take him down with those elbows. And Verdun is just an absolute monster on the mat, of course. But the improvements that he's made with his striking ha have been phenomenal. Uh, a guy who really goes for it. And Travis Brown, uh, again, just a guy with a lot of size. And both these guys have trained for this fight like it's a championship fight. It's five rounds. They know the importance of it. And Cain Velasquez needs a challenger, man. Yeah, Travis Brown really seems to be all the rage right now in the heavyweight division. Three straight knockout of the night performances. Fabricio Verdum, though, now amidst his second UFC stand is 3-0 as well. And the, the striking game, as you heard from Joe Rogan, is starting to match up with the grappling game. So needless to say, there will be a worthy number one contender after Saturday night. Yeah, absolutely. Been working very hard with Javier Cordero. And uh, I had a chance to talk to Fabricio last week. He's been training very, very hard, working a lot on his strength conditioning. So it's going to be a great fight. Travis Brown been doing the same. We shall see the Octagon hits Orlando Saturday night for Fox UFC Saturday. Of course, a lot of business still to attend to here in Quebec City. Still to come, the collision of coaches. Patrick Cote's team stole the show on The Ultimate Fighter. Tonight, the Predator gets his chance to shine. But of course, Team Australia's Kyle Noak is finally healthy. He will be looking to spoil the party here in Canada. That fight is yours coming up later. But up next, it is the Ultimate Fighter Nation's middleweight final. The field has been whittled down to its final two. They are Canadian Sheldon Westcott and Elias Theodoro. They make their way to the octagon straight ahead. Stay with us.
are back here in stunning Quebec City for UFC Fight Night, Bisping versus Kennedy. And tonight we're also putting a bow on the Ultimate Fighter Nations, and that brings us to the winner of the second performance bonus of the season. It goes to Team Canada's finalist Sheldon Westcott for his semifinal victory over Team Australia's Vic Grujic. The choke was Westcott's second straight win by submission. Westcott also takes home 25K for the performance bonus of the season. All right, so the last two middleweights standing are Team Canada powerhouses, Elias Theodoro and Sheldon Westcott. Only one man will leave the octagon forever branded the ultimate fighter. St. Albert, born and raised fighting out of, I wouldn't live anywhere else. I wouldn't raise my kids anywhere else. It's the most beautiful place I've been in the country and the world. I love living there. My two nieces were three don't really understand what I do. And Sydney, who's 11, she understands. She knows 100% that MMA is just a sport. And she actually trains as well, because she wants to be like her uncle, so. As soon as I got home, taking care of all these small injuries that I picked up over in the Ultimate Fighter House and making sure that I maintain myself. It's something I kind of maybe neglected earlier on in my career, but now at this level, I can't keep them being hurt. Everything's at stake. It's the biggest fight of my career, and it's against someone who I know, who I became friends with, and someone who, honestly, I want to take the O out of his record. For Elias not to take this away from me, let's finish the fight. If the fight goes to a decision with Elias' style, maybe he could beat me. But he has to last 15 minutes. Every single punch I throw, is gonna put him out. Every time I slam him, is to knock him unconscious. And every single time I grab an arm, I grab a leg, is to break it or put him out cold. That's just the way I fight. And if he doesn't tap quick, he'll go to sleep. Once you're the first person to do something, it doesn't matter who did it second. And I wanna be the first ultimate fighter from Canada. Elias, there's absolutely no way you're gonna beat me tonight. My name is Elias Spartan Theodoro. I'm from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and I train out of Head Rush Training Center. We've been working on head movement, striking, footwork, getting out of the way. Sheldon's gonna come at me straight. I got angles, and that's what we've been working on. When you tell your parents that you want to be a professional puncher and kicker, they got some reservations. But uh, over the last three years, I kind of just showed them my focus and my dedication and my love for this sport, and they honestly are my bedrock. With my mom, it's still taking some time. She starts every fight like this and ends it like that. So only luckily because I, I'm undefeated, she ends up like this with a smile. So that's always half good. My brother, he's uh, just as supportive and he's my best friend. The whole family, we just kind of are just like this, man, and it helps me get where I am today. Ever since I came back here, there's been a lot of hard work. Footwork, it's movement, it's just hitting him. He's an opponent that doesn't like to get hit. We saw how on the Ultimate Fighter, he rushes forward like a bull because he wants to finish a fight as quick as possible. He doesn't enjoy being there. I enjoy being there. I'm a fighter, and I'm going to hit him and move out of the way and rinse and repeat. I got a pace that no one can handle. All the powers of Sheldon, he's actually a very athletic person, but I have the mentality of no. Whenever my opponent tries something, all I say is no. And I do that with my cardio and my pace and just my will. I don't know how to lose, and I don't plan on losing anytime soon. Sheldon, I like you, but I'm going to do what I always do. Win. Coming up next, it is our Ultimate Fighter Nation's middleweight final as Elias the Spartan Theodora battles Sheldon Westcott. at the Ultimate Fighter Nation's middleweight final between Canadian Sheldon Westcott and Elias Theodoro. Both parties six foot one inches tall. Of course, the number that jumps off the page, the five inch reach advantage for Elias Theodoro. To get us started with the introductions, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight will determine who will be the middleweight winner of the Ultimate Fighter Nations. This fight is three rounds in the UFC middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding an undefeated professional record. Nine wins, no losses. He can, 16 on his call, weighing in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Elias the Spartan Theodoro. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed 
martial artist, holding a professional record. Nine wins, one loss, one draw. He stands six feet one is tall, weighing in at 184 pounds. Riley, out of St. Albert, Alberta, Canada, Sheldon Westcott. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Philip Chartier. Philip Chartier, our referee. You think Sheldon Westcott's geeked at all? Oh, man. A lot of you were in commercial break when he did a full sprint to the octagon, leaving his team behind, <laughs> almost slip. You know, at least when Frankie Edgar rushes through that walk, he doesn't slip. So Sheldon Westcott <laughs> immediately takes the center of the octagon. The fight clock is brought to you by Transcendence from Warner Brothers Pictures in theaters Friday, rated PG-13. Coming in here very emotional, but that can come back to to haunt you and expend a lot of energy early. He's getting off to a fast start here, but Theodoro on the opposite side of that looks very relaxed, very calm, and Westcott puts him on his back. So Sheldon Westcott, not a time waster in any sense, and trying to put it on Elias Theodoro here in the early going. Westcott trying to take the back of Theodoro here. Elias did a great job of removing that hook, but now he's set back. He has both hooks in now. Elias is doing a good job of turning and facing, but he gives up the back here. Gets the hooks removed, but... Westcott playing backpack here. Elias Theodoro fought five full rounds on the show for Sheldon Westcott. Two first round finishes in under a minute. Yet it is Westcott who is the underdog here tonight. Elias Theodoro trying to work that hula hoop this game. He's controlling the wrist. Needs to grab that far leg and swing him off. He's got to be careful here. Westcott will just grind that face and look for a neck crank or face crank here. He's strong enough to pull off the submission that way. So, about two minutes into this one, Elias Theodoro's submission defense is being tested. Westcott continues to work off of his back. Westcott off to a great start here. Elias trying to grab that two-on-one on, on the wrist and swing him off, and he's doing a great job of escaping here. And he's out! Nice job there by Theodoro, and now raining down with some power shots. What a pace here for the first half of the first round. Oh, big knee there from Theodoro. Perhaps stung Westcott a little bit. And that one went upstairs and landed on the jaw of Westcott. Another one. And Westcott's knee had just lifted off the canvas, making that a legal blow. Exactly. Westcott pursuing that takedown right in front of us, trying to lock hands underneath the butt of Elias Theodoro. Theodoro defending the takedown very well so far. Oh, nice elbow there on the ear by Theodoro. So, Theodoro knew that bull rush was coming early. He survived it and now mounts in some offense here of his own. Yeah, we're seeing Westcott really slow down here. And this is what I was talking about, possibly going in to the fight. Too emotional, Theodoro was attacking with a guillotine and Westcott just dropped to guard. Being overly emotional, you spend a lot of energy, you don't pace yourself properly. I'm not saying that's the case right now for Westcott. He still may be fine, but... Theodoro, the consensus top Canadian middleweight outside the UFC. Now he is here and looking to wrap up that six-figure UFC contract. Thirty seconds 
now to go in what has been a very fast-paced opening round. Theodora was talking about finding angles, using his feet, and moving that head. And we're seeing that on display right now. And this is a powerful 185 pounder. Man. So in round one, it was Westcott early and Theodoro late. Theodora continuing the pressure here down the stretch. Nice round there. Sitting still for him. You need to come forward and get your foot on the outside. You're backing up. Why are you backing up? Backing up is not in the game plan. You need to move forward the whole time. Okay? When he's just gonna you let him pick away water. If you need to pick away at kicks like that, it's, it's not gonna happen. You need to come forward, okay? No more moving backwards. Forward, forward, foot on the outside. Every time you hit the cross and, or the hook, you need to put the other punch on it. Just one, singly. Okay? Let's go. Let's move forward the whole time. There's no backing up this round. That round was probably 50-50. Okay? So we cannot leave it to these judges. Let's go. You move forward, foot on the outside. Take your, take your time, Elias. Be straight. This is about you. Fight you your fight, baby. Let's go. So, Kenny Floyd and Taylor, two rounds there. If you're Sheldon Westcott, what is the strategy here moving forward? But his corner wants them to move forward. They don't want him to take one step back. They want pressure, pressure the whole time. But right now, he's getting countered by Theodoro. And Theodoro is avoiding that forward pressure with angles and lateral movement. And he's landing shots because of it. And look at the variety of the striking. And that will make a guy go back. Yeah, the punches in bunches for Theodoro and for Sheldon Westcott. Spent a lot of that gas tank in that first round, especially in those first two minutes. That's right. Theodoro is working on a takedown of his own here. That is a powerful kid right there. Now he's trying to take the back of Westcott. Theodoro prides himself on his cardio and his mental toughness. When the UFC asked him about his strengths, those were the first two things he listed. Another power takedown there for the undefeated Theodora. Theodoro doing a good job of really trying to tire out Westcott. He's kind of baiting him and trying to take him down. He's letting him waste a lot of energy. He's relaxing on the clinch, taking his time. Ah, nuts. Westcott showing off his strength with a beautiful takedown, but Theodore right back to his feet. Westcott working on that guillotine, but he's out. And you just wonder again if Sheldon Westcott is a little bit compromised in the gas department as Theodoro rains down power shots. He's in a tough spot here. Theodoro putting a lot of pressure on now. Westcott is exhausted here, John. Yeah, he was perhaps too excited too early. And you know, for Elias Theodore, we mentioned somewhat concerned about the show. He stuck to his grappling, but as you're seeing here, uh, the man can crack. Well, it shows his intelligence. He uses what works. Even if you know you have a little bit of an edge on the striking, but you know you are a lot better with the grappling, you're gonna use the grappling. And Theodore used that throughout the season. Now he's pouring it on Westcott. Three huge knees followed by a takedown from Theodore. towards a potential finish here. Nice straight right hand gets through. So perhaps a valuable lesson learned here for Sheldon Westcott as we go under two minutes in the second round. Huge right. elbow for Theodore. Brutal elbow, John. Nice short right elbow, and now he's into the mount. It gets worse. I 
tell you though, Sheldon Westcott, much respect, he's digging deep, staying in this fight. Now Westcott showing a lot of heart right now, but he's in big time trouble here against Elias Theodoro. Elias Theodoro, one career win by submission, trying to finish things off here in the second round. Nice escape from Westcott. He's in the half guard position, way better than the back mount, but Theodoro still pouring it on with short elbows and hammer fists. And a huge mouse on the forehead for Sheldon Westcott. He has absorbed his share of punishment here in round two. Less than a minute to go. A little high bomb there from Elias Theodoro. Wow. Shouted out an ass, but no, I did, I did not. A <laughs> uh, big right hand followed by a hammer fist. All Elias Theodore here in round two. And how much more can Sheldon Westcott take? Man, Westcott showing a lot of heart, but at this point, That'll they gotta stop it. it. Elias Theodoro is the ultimate fighter. How about that, my man? Man. Theodoro is legit. 10 and 0, and he is no longer the best middleweight outside the UFC from Canada. He is here, and he has just secured a six-figure UFC contract. Man, well, I tell you what, Westcott, who is a legitimate beast, just was really outpaced by Elias Theodoro, who just played it very smart from the beginning, John. He he was in a tough position. He waited out, he stayed patient, and got the win. So Elias Theodore will get it done tonight. We'll talk to him and present that trophy after this. We are live on Fox Sports 1. Stay with us. We are back inside the arena here in Quebec City. It is UFC Fight Night. Bisping versus Kennedy here on Fox Sports 1. And after the Bisping Kennedy main event, the all-new season of The Ultimate Fighter debuts as bitter rivals take the reins to coach the next generation of UFC fighters. The Ultimate Fighter Team Edgar versus Team Penn begins next only on Fox Sports 1 and, of course, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. All right, let's get it inside to Bruce Buffer. He has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Philip Chartier has called a stop to this contest at four minutes, 41 seconds of the second round. Declaring the winner by TKO, and now the middleweight winner of the Ultimate Fighter Nations, Elias the Spartan Theodoro. Elias, come on over here. Elias, congratulations. You are the Ultimate Fighter. You get the contract with the U Scare me, come on. Okay. You get the contract with the UFC, buddy. Congratulations. Uh, unfortunately, no. Dang it. It's all good. Talk to you guys later. Oh my Congrats, god. Elias. Thank you. I don't know what this means to me. Oh All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your winner. He is the ultimate fighter, Elias Theodoro. You better get that hair on full display here. I cannot recall a fighter more confident in a UFC debut than you here tonight. You knew you were going to get that early onslaught from Sheldon Westcott. You survived and advanced once again. Congratulations. Thank you so much. This is honestly an amazing thing. I, I, I thank you, everyone from Quebec City. Thank you, everyone around the world watching. This is honestly the greatest moment of my life, and I'm so happy to share it with all of you. Want to take a quick look back at the fight. It was really all about your strike, and after those first two minutes, you dominated the action there, Adam. Uh, yeah, man, I'm a mixed martial artist. I can do it all. Uh, I got a little slack over the intranets, uh, calling me a cage humper of sorts, but I think uh, this proves that I kick ass. But if I'm, I'm on TV, I'm sorry if I'm not allowed to say that. That's okay. I think that one's okay. So you moved to 10-0 here. Obviously a tremendous win. You even mixed in a hello to your mother in between yeah. fight action. Pretty good stuff. Yes, yes. I don't know. I, my mom's here. My dad's here. My brother's here. They're my rock, man. They, they, they mean everything to me. And all my family and friends that came here, honestly, I'm going to cry. Like, oh, yes, yes, yes. This is the most amazing, amazing thing I've ever happened to me. I'm honestly in the names of uh, Stephen Bonner, what's it called, Forrest Griffin, Rashad Evans, the list goes on, man. That, my name is Amongst that. And my, and, my, and my good friend Chad LaPriest. Um, amen to that guy, man. He's, 
he kicks butt too. You joined that elite company and you did so with style points tonight. Let's hear it one more time. Your ultimate fighter winner, Elias Theodoro. Elias Theodoro, who claims to have the best hair in MMA. He just might, but he definitely has the best MMA game as far as the middleweights go in the tough nations. Very, very impressive. A smart fighter, a physical fighter. Excellent stuff. A lot of UFC royalty in the building here tonight. Rory McDonald support the World Series champions, yeah. by the way. He'll fight Tyron Woodley June 14th in Vancouver. Perhaps that could set up a title shot for the winner. All right, coming up next, a welterweight fight between Sam Stout and KJ Nunes. Stay with us. I trust you will. It is UFC Fight Night on Fox Sports 1. John Anna Kenny Foley and thrilled to be in the building here tonight. It is UFC Fight Night, Bisping versus Kennedy here on Fox Sports 1. A busy stretch here in April for the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And the decisions have certainly given way to the knockouts here tonight in Quebec City. A seven-time Strikeforce veteran, K.J. Nunes, is set for his third UFC appearance as he takes on the longtime lightweight division staple, Sam Stepp. Vanessa Hansen getting us going for round one here in the welterweight division. At least according to Las Vegas, the closest fight top to bottom on the fight card on paper for all of your odds and rankings needs go to ufc.com and sam stout in the black trunks and kj noons in the white with black trim kj noons looking for that stomp kick a little bit seeing more of a kicking game from kj which is a good sign we've seen him struggle against good kickers like guys like donald cerrone and doesn't allow him to find his range. Oh. Look at that huge right hand. And he follows it up with a left that lands flush. KJ News. Wow. What about that? And Sam Stout still coming to, maybe grappling the referee there. So oh, KJ News. That right hand was ridiculous. Well, we've seen flashes, Kenny, at times from KJ News, man. And when he connects, oftentimes that is what can happen. The former pro boxer coming into enemy territory and getting it done tonight. Man, you never know what KJ News is gonna show up. Well, look at this right hand, boom. Head off the center line, right hand came after, and then a left and a right and a right. <clears throat> Bang, right on the chin, oh man. Huge left hand, and that was the one that really put him out. Yeah, those accurate ground shots were key for K.J. Nunes, but how Man. about that right? What a finish from K.J. Nunes against Sam Stout, who has a tremendous chin. He's been around the game for so long, but Stout was out. You can see Sam doesn't know which guy to fight here. Man. Yeah, putting the referee in a headlock there. Yeah, he, he's, he was out of it. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Philip Chartier has called a stop to this contest at 30 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout, KJ News. All right, I'm here with your winner, a very happy man, KJ Nunes. Quick day at the office, 30 seconds here tonight. Congratulations on what certainly is your biggest UFC win. Most definitely. I want to say thank you to UFC, and um, thank you for the fight. It was a great fight. Thank you. Well, we want to take a look back at it and get your analysis here. It was the overhand right. You leaned and hit him right on the button. Your thoughts on how the end of the fight transpired? Uh, you know, uh, Sam's a tough guy. You know, this is probably my toughest camp I've ever done. I trained three months for this. I was in top shape. And, uh, you know, I just came in with the overhand right, and he's never been stopped. And this is, uh, this is by far one of my best uh, wins. He's a, he's a great competitor, a tough guy. And you certainly stayed focused there to make sure the accuracy was there on those final two blows, the left and then the right. Uh, scintillating knockout victory for you here tonight. As you move forward now, uh, is the future at 155 or 170 for you? I mean, you know, we just agreed to do a catch weight last minute because we didn't want to cut so much weight so we make for a more exciting fight. And... I think it did, and uh, I don't know, whatever uh, UFC wants me to be at, but uh, it was a great fight. Thank you, Canada. I want to just give a shout-out to my Uncle Ulu who passed away and uh, Dion that passed away. This, this one was for you guys.
Thank you very much. And I know you got some Canadian fight fans now in your corner. Tremendous victory. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, KJ News. All right, up next, it will be the Predator, Patrick Cote's turn. He is a local in every sense. 13 and one on Canadian turf tonight. He chases a third straight victory inside the octagon. He will face his rival coach from the Ultimate Fighter Nations, the versatile finisher, Kyle Noak, who is back for the first time since September of 2012. Noak and Cote are coming up next, and later, Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy in their grudge match. I'm going to beat Tim Kennedy so badly that nobody's ever going to want to tune into a Tim Kennedy fight ever again because they're going to know that he's a pretender, a wannabe, and after I'm done, he's going to be working at an army recruitment office. When I finish Michael Bisping tonight, I think it makes a bold statement to everybody in the middleweight division, you know, that I'm not a pretender. I think I'm one of the best, and I want to be fighting the best. Well, as usual, the Canadian fight fans adding to the experience here tonight. And in 10 days' time, the focus will shift to Baltimore, Maryland. It'll be UFC 172. Take a look. John Jones is coming into this title defense against Glover Teixeira, coming off of the most difficult challenge of his entire mixed martial arts career. He fought Alexander Gustafsson in a spectacular fight, in an amazing, very close contest. John Jones comes into this fight with the aura of invincibility peeled away. The question now becomes, can he endure the even more dangerous striking style that Glover Teixeira presents? Many people think that what Glover brings into the octagon that Alexander Gustafsson doesn't is true one-punch knockout power. He knocks guys dead. Oh, perfect shot! Glover oh. is not a man to be taken lightly. He has very good wrestling, he has a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and he is perhaps the most dangerous striker that John Jones has ever faced inside the octagon. If you've seen John Jones fight inside the octagon, you know that John's most spectacular performances were the most dangerous challenges. Although John has more UFC fights and John has more title fights, Glover Teixeira has been around the block and comes into this fight widely considered to be the most dangerous threat that John Jones has ever faced inside the octagon. Well, in March of 2011, John Jones became the youngest champion in UFC history, his seventh title defense Coming up at UFC 172 against Glover Teixeira also that night. As you see there, Anthony Rumble Johnson returning to the big show against Mr. Wonderful Phil Davis. Huge middleweight fight, Luke Rockhold and Tim Bosch. No surprise, all hands on deck for the UFC at 172. You know, prior to the fight against Alexander Gustafson, everyone considered John Jones virtually unbeatable. Uh, and that's just a fact, let's keep it real. Uh, and, and when he fought uh, Gustafson, people saw that it was possible that you can get, you know, outbox him. You, sure. you can't take him down. And for Glover Teixeira heading into this fight, that's a, a big confidence builder for him. And what is John Jones' confidence going to be like coming after, uh, coming off of that Gustafson fight? A lot, of, a lot of very respected people in the fight game believe Glover Teixeira will be the guy. Realistically, how do you assess his, champ his chances against a guy who has been nothing if not dominant in John Jones? Well, I think Glover Teixeira is very underrated in the wrestling department. Uh, he has crazy knockout power. Uh, he's not afraid to trade. He's going to get in there. He's not going to be intimidated by a guy like John Jones. And Glover Teixeira is also a huge 205-pounder. But what we can't forget about John Jones is that fight against Ale Alexander Gustafson proved a lot to me because for anyone who thought, well, maybe John Jones doesn't have the heart. Maybe he doesn't have the chin. He proved that he has all of those things. This guy is a beast. To me, that fight against Gustafson makes him all that much more impressive. And I think for a lot of fighters, when you can take a beating to some extent, I mean, John Jones certainly doled out his share of punishment that night, but that can be a huge confidence yes. booster going forward to know that you can survive 25 minutes and still retain the championship. Yeah, uh, without a doubt. And, and for Glover Teixeira, uh, again, it's a, it's a huge confidence builder. Everyone that you talk to, people who have trained with both, people who have fought for both guys, I, I mean, they believe that Glover Teixeira may be that guy to go out and take that belt from John Jones. So uh, going to be a very interesting fight. 
Glover has has a lot of momentum heading into this, and he's looking for the knockout against Jones. All right, well, next up here in Quebec, it is our co-main event, Kyle Noken, Patrick Cote. A veteran of 27 pro fights, Kyle Noak makes his second straight appearance in Canada here tonight. He faces his rival Ultimate Fighter coach, Patrick Cote. After a season coaching against each other on the Ultimate Fighter Nations, veterans Kyle Noak and Patrick Cote will try to make a final statement tonight in the Octagon. Team Australia frontman Noak impressed fight fans around the world in his last appearance at UFC 152 as he debuted at 170 pounds with a 45-second knockout of Charlie Brennan. It was actually a move Quebec's Cote made last year after a long career at middleweight, and he also found success decisioning Bobby Volker at UFC 158. Now two veterans with a new lease on their fighting careers attempt to move up another rung on the welterweight ladder. Coming up next, the co-main event. Kyle Noak, Patrick the Predator Cote. This is UFC Fight Night. This is Fox Sports 1. All right, co-main event now in the welterweight division as we get to the tail of the tape. The 34-year-old Team Canada coach Patrick Cote against Team Australia's Kyle Noak. 5'11 and a half, opposite 6'1. It is a one-inch reach advantage for what is a massive welterweight in Kyle Noak. To get us started with the official introductions, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening. This fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding professional record. 20 wins, six losses, one draw. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 171 pounds. Fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, by way of Dubbo, New South Wales, Australia, Kyle No. And now, introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a boxer and Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record, 20 wins, 8 losses. He stands 5 feet, 11 and 1 half inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Patrick the Predator Cote! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. So Dan Mergliata draws the co-main event assignment here tonight. Patrick Cote and Kyle Noak. They touch him up and we are underway. The fight clock is brought to you by Transcendence from Warner Brothers Pictures in theaters Friday, rated PG-13. It is Kyle Noak in the white trunks with gray and Coach A in the black with red. Oh, yeah, that one landed. Man. No. Very dynamic striker. Both men in tremendous shape. This is the best shape I've seen both of these guys here. Oh. Nice front kick to the body for Kyle Note. He and Tim Kennedy, who you'll see next in our main event, working side by side in training camp in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in advance of the showcase tonight in Quebec City. Kyle Noke. Really trying to keep Cote on the outside. You do not want Cote on the inside landing. Those hooks, and there's that right hand. And that one forced a little bit of a stumble out of Kyle Noak. Man, Cote out for blood here early. Really would be huge here tonight for Kyle Noak if he could come into enemy territory and win one for his fellow Australians who failed to play someone in our Ultimate Fighter Nations Finals. Yeah, I mean, the strategy is clear for Kyle Noak. It's all the way out or all the way in. You want to be all the way in in the clinch or keeping Cote and those dangerous hooks on the outside. And that's why you're seeing that brutal push kick from Kyle Noak. That middle range right there is where he's got to be careful. 
Again, a nice kick to the body for Noku who has been opened up on that left side by Patrick Cote. Beautiful takedown from Patrick Cote as he tries to move into side control. He's in half guard and Kyle Noak trying to wrench that neck of Patrick Cote, but he's in half guard, so it's difficult to finish him there. Cote back in the full guard of Kyle Noak. Seven career wins by submission for Kyle Noak. The last though coming against Chris Camozzi back in 2011 at UFC 127. Oh, Cote postures up with a big elbow. Kyle Nope working on an arm bar here. Unable to get the angle. Cote's head position. He's keeping that head right over the head of Kyle Nope. Which makes things very difficult to lock up a submission or to get back to your feet. Cote staying active here and landed some nice ground and pound. This place loud, deafening as Patrick Cote works inside of Kyle Noak's guard. Trying Kyle, to stay active. Kyle's got to get his feet on the hips of Cote and push away. Maybe get to a butterfly guard and elevate those hips of Patrick Cote. We talked about that middle range on the feet. Well, Cote's in that middle range of the guard on the mat. Noak needs to either wrap him up or start to push away, get those feet on the hips. Big right hand for Cote. Cote's trying to trap that foot of Kyle Noak and work a guard pass, but Noak is onto it and back to full guard. Kyle Noak doing a pretty good job of controlling that wrist of Patrick Cote. See that left hand controlling the right wrist, and he's just popped up for a triangle, but Cote, his posture thwarts that attempt. And Patrick Cote more than content to work from this position, and continues to work away upstairs on Kyle Noak. Oh, big elbow there. Cote very precise with his ground and pound. Nice short elbow, just keeping his posture, keeping position, and short shots. So a dominant conclusion, at least to round one for Patrick Cote working here. in anticipation of their own getting it done here tonight. Little slip there by Kyle Noak. Noak has been using a lot of front kicks, a lot of push kicks to 
that body of Patrick Cote. Cote has stayed very composed. I tell you what, having a chance to train with Patrick Cote, this guy is a gamer, man. When it's fight time, he shows up to fight. Oh, oh. big knee from No! And Cote is stunned. No pursuing the finish here. Cote is in survival mode. Nope, now trying to lock up a guillotine, now trying to get underhooks. It looked like Cote ran right into that knee. The timing was a little off from Cote, but he is cut as well, and he is hurt. He's got a tremendous chin, does Patrick Cote, and he is using it here tonight. The same, of course, can be said of Kyle Noak. He's only been knocked out once in 27 professional fights. Yeah, it looks like he's got a cut, possibly on the top of his head there when he ran into that knee. So a little early adversity in round two for the Canadian. Oh man, look at that stomp kick. Yeah, to the leg of Cote from Nope. And he was a little bit buckled by it. You see our champ at 205 pounds, John Jones used that technique a lot. And you wonder, Kenny, if Cote has fully recovered, perhaps not at this point. Yeah, he's still trying to find his range, but you can see Cote trying to adjust to those kicks of Kyle Noak by doing a tie walk. It's a technique I had to use against Aldo, another great kicker. And you kind of have to stomp your way through and march through it. As you do that, you block some of the kicks and you get that kicker to hesitate a little bit. And Cote has done that and found a way on the inside and has Nope on his back right now. And an important takedown for Patrick Cote here. Spent about a month of his training camp at Tiger Muay Thai, also a Brazilian top team in Thailand as well. Two minutes now to go in the second round of a possible three. Pretty much a repeat of round one, John, with Nope getting the better of Cote on the feet. And then Cote about midway getting the takedown and now he's in control. The Cote chance fill in the air here in the building in Quebec City. And for Kyle Noak, it would behoove him to not end rounds one and two working off of his back. Big elbow from Cote. Yeah, Noak's trying to walk over towards the cage as he eats a couple elbows from Cote. Yeah, make it four in that exchange there that landed for Cote. And there he is, he's finding his back up against the cage so he can cage walk here. He's got a post on his arm and sit up and that's what he's doing now. Cote needs to try to lift his hips and butt up and away from that cage so he can put him flat on his back again. No doing a good job of preventing that so far and now he's back to his feet, he can get up. Oh, big knee to the midsection there, lands for Cote. And that one hurt Kyle Noak. Beautiful knee from Cote. As he hurt Noak there with that body shot. Man, how about the desire on both sides to stay in this fight? Some big blows have landed on both sides here. This has been such a great fight. Very technical, very strategic fight, but exciting. And you know, when these guys coast on the Ultimate Fighter Nations, they really wanted to keep the focus on the fighters. Uh, not that they were overly amicable or friendly, but sure. they really preferred to keep the season's focus on the guys who were competing. Tonight they are competing and putting on a show here in Quebec City. Cote pressing forward once again here towards the tail end of round two. Chin. And it looked like Noak was going to have Cote out of there, but we all know about Cote's chin and heart. 
A beautiful time knee right there. Just a spear to the head of Patrick Cote. All right, don't stay in front of him because that's all he's doing. He's timing you. Pipat, on baisse pas la tête, s'il te plaît, hein? Quand tu quand tu rentres avec l'overline, tu baisses pour ta tête, tu rentres avec le genou. All right, you're on the ground, you're perfect. Let's take a look at that knee again. Cote going in for the takedown, ran right into that pointy knee of Kyle Noak. What a technique from Noak, and what a chin from Patrick Cote. Yeah, Cote immediately into survival mode. It's going to take a whole lot to put him away here tonight. The chin really has been a weapon for both guys in their UFC careers. Third and final round now between the Ultimate Fighter Nation's coaches. Able to escape that overhand right attempt by Cote. And escapes that single as well. Cote putting a lot of pressure on Noak. And Noak is backing straight up. He's going to have to find angles. He has to show more lateral movement against Cote, who you know is going to try to pursue that takedown. A laser like focus in the eyes of Patrick Cote. Operating out of the southpaw stance here. Noak circling away, but he does eat the right hand there. Both guys in tremendous shape, as you might expect. Neither party letting up. Cote needs to go back to pursuing Kyle Noak. He needs to back Noak up. You don't want a guy with those kind of weapons, that kind of striking arsenal going forward and, and dictating the pace of the fight. There he goes. That's what Cote needs to do. Nope now doing a good job of getting that overhook. He's got the right underhook now. He's got to use that split leg defense up against the cage and try to get his back off of there. Cote working hard here in the clinch, and Noak is able to get out. Under three minutes now to go in the fight. Well, still a nice bounce in the step of Kyle Noak. Not as much offense as we saw from him to start rounds one and two here in the third. Yeah, Cote's doing a good job of pursuing him, of backing him up. And we're not seeing it as much offense from Noke because of it. Not necessarily a counter striker, but certainly a guy who has a lot of offense when he's going forward. And that front kick seems to be the weapon he keeps trying to employ. Yeah, he's used it very, very well against Cote. Trying to use that range, that reach advantage. You can see Cote lifting that lead leg, trying to tie walk his way in. And he's in on the leg now. See if he can finish this high crotch. His head is on the outside. And he does. Beautiful job grabbing at that second leg to ground Kyle Luke. Very good observation there. John just kind of did that little reverse knee tap just behind the leg. Very technical takedown. Works very well in combination with the high crotch takedown. And once again, late in the round, we have Cote on top. And you see that is a staple of certain fight camps and fighters in the UFC. Largely spend the round on the feet and then go for that takedown late. Yeah, and again, we have to we have to mention that a judge is going to look, is going to remember uh, what happened later in the round, right? So smart strategy from Cote. Both guys have certainly had their moments on the feet. It's been Patrick Cote with a late takedown in rounds one, two, and now the third. Now this is where it gets tricky being an MMA judge here. What do you give more weight to? The striking of Noak or the takedowns and ground and pound of Cote? Oh, big elbow there by Cote. And that one opened Kyle Noak up. Yeah, it did. Cote keeping a lot of pressure here, staying busy, trying not to 
Let Nope get back to his feet. Nope trying to scramble back to his feet again. Has his back up against the cage. Nope working hard to get back to one knee. Cote though keeping the body lock here. Nice work from Cote. He can maybe finish the double leg again here. Now he's up high. He's up a little too high. Seconds ticking off the clock. It's Nope with a body shot by Patrick Cote. Controlling the octagon down the stretch of the fight. What a great fight. Excellent co-man event between two guys with a whole lot of respect for one another. Man, that was a back and forth fight right there. The ground game of Cote versus the striking of Nook. I'm glad I'm not a, I'm glad I'm not a judge. So Patrick Cote looking to complete the Canadian sweep here tonight. We will see if he has done enough to get the win. The official decision is next. It is UFC Fight Night here on Fox Sports 1. John Anna Kenny Florian with you. We are live in Quebec City. It is UFC Fight Night on America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1. And Saturday, it's double header action on Fox Sports 1 as Mike Trout and the Angels take on reigning AL MVP Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers. Then Diamondbacks taking on the Dodgers. It all begins 12.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. All right, let's go inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score the contest 29-28, 29-28, and 30-27 for the winner by unanimous decision, Patrick the Predator Cote! All right, Quebec, I am here with your winner, Patrick Cote. You own this building here tonight. I'm just going to let you take it all in, man. Congratulations. You put a great capstone, obviously, on what was a tremendous season for Team Canada. All right, that was awesome. But, you know, I don't want to take all the credit on my fight. My team fought very well. I want to congratulate the four finalists tonight. They, they're very far hard to get. The, the, finally, we have the, the Canadian winner of the Ultimate Fighter season. It was uh, awesome. It's been a pleasure to do this season with uh, Kyle. He's a pure gentleman. And Quebec, merci d'être venu ici en grand nombre. Encouragez UFC. Je vous aime beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Just one second. I just want to say one thing. I want to say thanks to one guy. My first coach from here, from Quebec City. Philippe Lagacé, je ne sais pas si c'est ici. Mais je t'ai beaucoup, j'ai beaucoup de reconnaissance envers toi. Merci, Jean Québec. À bientôt. You know he was obviously inspired by this performance here tonight, but I want to talk about the takedowns. Both of you guys had your moments on the feet, but you keep le you kept leaning on that takedown late in the round, and that sort of swung the scorecards your way, yes? Yes, you know, where wrestling has been always my weakness, and I knew it. You know, I'm 34 years old. I'm, I, I feel, you know, very good, better than ever. You know, that sounds cliche, but I'm the best shirt of my life. And, uh, yeah, I had great camp. Uh, I, that was my hardest uh, camp ever. I got a great team. And I want to thank all my training partners on my team, all my sponsor. Thank you very much. And I'll be back here. I hope the UFC is going to come back here in Quebec City. Well, you are a class act. I know you had some pressure here in front of these fans tonight. And you come up large. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, the Predator, Patrick Cote. While well, we step over here and talk to Team Australia's Kyle Noak, ever gracious, of course, in defeat. A huge knee for you there in that second round. The finish nearly materialized. Your thoughts on what just transpired there over 15 hard minutes? Uh, you know, Patrick's a great component, uh, opponent. He told me he had the best camp of his life leading to this, so I'm glad I got to face the best Patrick Cote, you know. I hit him with everything I got, and he just looked at me. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I broke my hand in the first round, even hitting him that hard. But he just kept on looking at me, and I couldn't put him away, so... You know, thank you, Canada. Mercy. Thanks for having me for the tough show. Thank you. Well, you did a tremendous job, obviously, coaching on the show. What was the biggest takeaway for you after those six hard weeks coaching those fine Australian fighters? What was the biggest one? The biggest takeaway for you, that the entire experience with those fine Australian fighters. You know what? It was, it was an honor and a privilege to represent the UFC and represent my country on the, on the ultimate fighter, you know? And uh, like I said, I had, I had an absolute blast here filming it in Canada. Uh, everybody here was great, so, uh, you know, it was a good time. 
I know it's been a long layoff for you. A, a privilege to have you back in the Octagon. We look forward to your next fight. Congratulations on everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Noak. Kyle Noak, a true class act and a true mixed martial artist, but it is that man right there who got the, the sweep for Canada. It was his boys getting it done in the finals. And then it was the coach from Canada getting the win over the Australian, Kyle Noak. Very impressive. A lot of Canadian stars here. Francis Carmon, he fights C.B. Dalloway, co-main event in Berlin, Germany. Upcoming on UFC Fight Pass on May 31st. All right, following our main event here tonight, it's the premiere of The Ultimate Fighter. All eyes on BJ Penn and Frankie Edgar. The coaches are BJ Penn and Frankie Edgar, two former world champions. Frankie Edgar is a guy who many people believed should have fought at 145 pounds, but didn't, fought at 155 pounds, and beat everybody, including BJ Penn twice. This kid went from being a, a one-dimensional wrestler to having some of the best hands and, and, and knockouts and, and, and you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe wars. BJ Penn is one of the legends of the sport. He basically built the 155 pound division in the UFC and he had a world championship at 170 pounds and a world championship at 155 pounds. BJ coached season five of The Ultimate Fighter. You know, BJ just made the whole thing crazy. I mean, anything is possible with BJ. So BJ called me and said, I want another shot at Frankie Edgar. I shouldn't have lost to him once, let alone twice. And uh, I want this shot. And I called Frankie Edgar, and Frankie Edgar said I would love to give him that opportunity again. I will fight BJ, and I will coach against him. So I think there might be some tension the first day. But other than that, I think they both respect each other. All right, so tonight, following our main event between Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy, a new season of the Ultimate Fighter premieres, Team Edgar versus Team Penn. It begins at 10 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. And if our main event does run late, you would be wise to extend that DVR record window for that first episode of The Ultimate Fighter, Team Edgar versus Team Penn. So Patrick Cote lit this building up here in Quebec City, the main event approaching here shortly. After the break, though, we hit up the studio. They will dissect our main event. Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy. The wait is nearly over. Stay with us. UFC Fight Night is live on Fox Sports 1. After months of pre-fight trash talk, Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy meet in tonight's UFC Fight Night main event. Consistent with their rivalry, things got heated at the weigh-in yesterday, but while the Count voiced his opinion, the Army Rangers stayed calm and composed. They'll let their fists do the talking in just a little bit. Well, welcome inside our Fox Sports studio in Los Angeles, California. Karen Bryant, Daniel Cormier, and UFC lightweight champion Anthony Showtime Penn is here with you. And guys, we want to talk about this fight, the main event. It has been almost a full year since we've seen Michael Bisping in action. DC, yesterday he looked fired up and ready to go. Yeah, he always is ready to go. You know, Michael Bisping does talk the talk. We know that. But he also walks the walk. When he steps into the octagon, he is all business. Great footwork. Sharp, crisp boxing. Takedowns, it's okay. Michael Bisping pops right up. It zaps your energy, and he gets right back in your face because his cardio always holds up in these long fights. Michael Bisping has been at the top of this division for a really long time, and he's going to be at the top of this division for a long time to come. Anthony, let's talk about his opponent, Tim Kennedy. He's pretty much the prototypical American hero. Army Ranger, Special Forces, Green Beret. He's got a sniper experience. All that experience outside of the octagon really kind of makes the pressures inside the place look like a walk in the park. Do you think he's ready for this opportunity, though, this fight? Not only that, um, he has the skills set to go with all that. I mean, he has that mindset, but he also has the wrestling, he has the punching. We saw those last fight, big knockout, and he does a great job of holding you down. Um, I mean, I think he, uh, he uses wrestling right, and he uh, uses his striking to his advantage. He definitely should have a good night. Now, besides the skill set, DC, there's always an X factor going into this fight. What do you think it is? Um, my X factor is going to be the layoff. A lot of times you hear analysts talk about a guy being out of the cage for a long time, and it's consistent. We worry about the layoff. We worry about the ring rust. It's because it's true. If Michael Bisbing goes in there over-anxious, over-excited, maybe a little hesitant because it's been a while, he will make himself uh, 
a step behind. He always likes to lead, and he won't be able to do that if he's not in the right mindset. I'm going to go with uh, Tim, Tim Kennedy's mindset. I think uh, his, uh, his special forces training definitely gives him that uh, mental edge against Bisming. I think he's been under pressure a lot already, and this is his chance to break the top five, and I think he's going to do that. All right, gentlemen, the folks at home always like to hear your predictions. So, D.C., who do you think is taking home the W? I'm picking Michael Bisping. I, my, I haven't seen Michael Bisping lose this type of fight, where it's a fight that doesn't have title implications on the line. Um, that's when he sometimes stumbles. So I'm picking Bisping tonight against Tim Kennedy. I'm going to have to disagree with you again. Um, I'm going with, uh, I think uh, Tim Kennedy's going to go ahead and win this fight. I think he's going to go out there, um, make his case for why he's top five. You well, always disagree with him. <laughs> well, and he picked the fight, so he's, he's got to back no it up. Friend. This guy's no friend. Oh, he's no, you guys, coming up after the break, it is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Michael Bisping versus Tim Kennedy. We're going to get you back out to Quebec City when UFC Fight Night returns. Hi, I'm Claire Balding, and I'm here to tell you all about... The European Football Show. Life's a pitch. Ball top. Let me finish, guys. The Claire Balding Show has amazing guests. As does BTSP. And UFC Beyond the Octagon. I do have a live studio audience. So does Rugby Tonight. And MotoGP Tonight. We, we don't have tonight, tonight in our title. title. Boxing Tonight does. I think we can all agree that BT Sport has some pretty amazing studio shows. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. we do. Yes. yes. Scan your butt for the chance to win tickets to the 2014 FIFA World Cup Final. Lots of guys, hair loss can be a real worry. The Belgravia Centre can help. Visit BelgraviaCentre.com, specialising in nothing but hair loss. What a waste! I always get my five a day! <laughs> Pepper Army, it's a bit of an animal. Fox UFC Saturday returns with the most exciting network card in UFC history, featuring heavyweight contenders Fabricio Verdum and Travis Brown. Plus, Liz Carmouche takes on Misha Tate and Cerrone battles Barboza. It all starts this week at 5 p.m. Eastern with the live prelims on Fox Sports 1, then turn it over to Fox at 8 p.m. for the main card. So our five-round middleweight main event is fastly approaching here in Quebec City between Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy as we take a final look backstage inside the locker room of our main adventures. Now, things got testy earlier in the week here at the presser. They really boiled over at the weigh-in here in Quebec City on Tuesday. A huge test and a huge fight for both guys, and they certainly know what is at stake here tonight. Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy moments away from making that walk to the octagon. All right, just prior to the main event, Heidi Andrell caught up with Tim Kennedy's cheap corner, Greg Jackson, backstage. Heidi, take it away. Thank you very much, guys. Well, Greg, it's been certainly a war of words. No secret, these two don't get along. Have you had to have any conversations with Tim Kennedy about keeping his emotions in check in this one? No, Tim's such a master of controlling his emotions that uh, he's doing it for fun and because he loves it. And, uh, he, you know, there is animosity there, and he's certainly looking forward to the fight, but uh, he, he is uh, an amazing guy, and controlling his emotions is not his problem. You've said Michael Bisping's wrestling has been a little bit underrated. How much of a focus has that been for you guys this camp? Well, we focus pretty well on it because I think that, uh, you know, Bisping can mix it up boxing obviously very well, but he surprises people with his takedowns, and so uh, we've trained enough where hopefully he won't be surprising us. You said Tim Kennedy has a lot to gain from this fight. What did you mean by that statement? Well, you know, uh, Bisbing's been around for a long time. He's a legend, and uh, if you beat him, then you're, you're one step closer to that title. So I think it's, uh, it'd be a great step up, and uh, certainly uh, Bisbing, beating Bisbing convincingly will be great for Tim's career. We're looking forward to it. Thank you so much for taking the time, guys. We'll send it back to you. All right, Heidi, Craig, thank you very much. 
A lot of contenders now at the top of this 185 pound division. There really is no overstating just how big this main event is here tonight between two guys who are trying to get to that precipice, Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy. Huge, huge fight in the middleweight division. You know, if, if you don't want to be a champion of the sport, you don't belong in the UFC, period. I mean, both of these guys are looking for challenges. Michael Bisping knows the challenge that's in front of him with Tim Kennedy, and Tim Kennedy wants to move up the rankings. Everyone wants to beat a name like Miss Michael Bisping, a guy who's been a top middleweight for many, many years. Yeah, all the middleweights call him out, and speaking of those rankings, want to take an updated look at the rankings in the UFC's middleweight division. Of course, Chris Weidman reigns supreme as the champion. Anderson Silva nursing that leg injury. Leota Machida is next for Chris Weidman. Vitor Belfort, of course, is still lurking. Chaka de Souza. And there you see Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy still firmly in the mix. Well, you said it best earlier tonight, John. Uh, the middleweight division has never been healthier than the UFC. This is a group of killers right here. Uh, amazing, the, the kind of competition there in the middle And you know, Michael Bisping is one of the more successful fighters, at least in terms of UFC wins in promotional history. Already 14 wins, 10 in the middleweight division, but he is still in search of that elusive title shot. Yep. And tonight, he feels like potentially a win over Tim Kennedy uh, will get him perhaps one win away from getting a crack at the champion. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, Michael Bisping has always been right there, almost has, you know, it's been so close to getting that shot at the title, and he knows that the win over Tim Kennedy, uh, you know, he definitely will be that much more, uh, that much closer to fight for the belt. And you know, Tim Kennedy certainly recognizing Michael Bisping's status and place in the sport is, you see a live shot of Tim Kennedy killing time backstage, uh, but he likes this matchup stylistically and he feels like he's gonna come out here and seize the moment here tonight in what is his second straight UFC main event. Well, to beat Michael Bisping, you're gonna have to nullify that jab. Uh, you're gonna have to cut off the cage. Michael Bisping uh, is so good at using that forward again getting in and getting out. He finds his range. Tim Kennedy uh, definitely has his work cut out for him. But you know that he, he has the strategy built up with Greg Jackson and Winkle John uh, in his corner. Well, the preamble to this fight has just been fantastic, but the words are now ready to give way to the action. Bragging rights at stake. Michael Bisping, Tim Kennedy right now. It's been a tough year. I detached the retina, had the surgery. There was complications on top of that as well. So pretty much everything that can go wrong with an eye went wrong with my eye. And uh, yeah, it was tough, but I am a fighter. And, and in some ways, this was the hardest fight of my life. You know, I'm coming back bigger, better, stronger than ever. Unbelievable action! Technical decision over Alan Belcher at UFC 159. Nearly seven years in the UFC for Michael Bisping as he continues to track down a title shot here at 185 pounds. All right, let's get to the tail of the tape. It is our main event, number five, Michael Bisping, eighth ranked Tim Kennedy. 35-year-old Bisping, the 34-year-old Tim Kennedy. Two inches is the difference in height. A slightly more pronounced two and a half inch reach advantage for the two to one favorite. Michael Bisping. To get us started with the official introductions, here once more is Bruce Buffer. Madame et Monsieur du Quebec, this is the main event of the evening. Second by the Quebec Athletic Commission with Commissioner Michelle Hamlin. Our three judges scoring this contest at Octagon side are Richard Bertrand, Saul Diamato, and David Therrien. When the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. And now, for those in attendance and UFC fans watching around the world, live from Quebec City, Quebec, Canada! It's time! Five rounds in the UFC middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner of Mixed Martial Artists, holding a professional record. 17 wins, four losses. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 186 pounds. Fighting out of Austin, Texas, USA, Tim Kennedy! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the 
red corner of Valley Judo Fighter, holding a professional record, 25 wins, 5 losses. He stands 6 feet 1 inch tall, weighing in at 186 pounds, fighting out of Manchester, England, Michael the Count Bisping! Protect yourself at all time will be my command at all time. If you want to touch it up, do it now. Go back to your corner. And if you took yes on the will they touch gloves prop, go cash that ticket, ladies and gentlemen. How about that? <laughs> all right, Tim Kennedy and Michael Bisping. Man, this main event feels like a long time coming, and it's here. The Fight Clock is brought to you by Transcendence from Warner Brothers Pictures in theaters Friday, rated PG-13. Yeah, Bisping did touch gloves, but kind of treated it like a strike. Right. <laughs> Push it away. It is Michael Bisping in the red trunks and Tim Kennedy in the black. Immediately, Kennedy drops in on a single. Beautiful level change from Tim Kennedy. He's in on the single, now trying to switch to a double. Bisping putting a lot of pressure on the back of the head of Tim Kennedy to thwart this takedown attempt up against the cage. Tim Kennedy's got a deep double now, and Bisping's on his back, but this is where the fight takes place right here for Tim Kennedy. Can he keep Bisping flat on his back right now? Bisping trying to get to his knees, and a beautiful pickup. Tim Kennedy made a little table. By that, I mean he placed that leg up on his leg to keep him pinned. And what beautiful work from Tim Kennedy to keep Bisping flat on his back. And as Bisping attempted a few strikes there, compromised a little bit of position. And now Kennedy trying to work him away from the fence. Bisping trying to create distance. Trying to create space, and Tim Kennedy trying to work on a mount from here. We've seen BJ Penn utilize this guard pass and mount many times. He's got that near side underhook, John, and it is a very difficult guard pass to stop. Tim Kennedy's just waiting to mount. Let's see if he does it. He's going to try to throw that left leg up and over. And he's almost done it, but a nice butterfly guard from Michael Bisping to prevent it. Well, and fighting Tim Kennedy, it, it just makes for a suffocating day at the office, and at least in the early going here, uh, he has been able to keep Michael Bisping planted. This is what Kennedy wants, though. This is exactly what he wants. He's done an excellent job so far. Frustrating Bisping here on the mat. Michael now working on getting back to his feet. He's staying nice and composed. And look, he's going to try to make that table again. See how he's lifting that near side leg? He's going to try to prop it up on his leg. If Bisping tries to come up, he's going to prop that leg up on his leg and create a table. After the main event, here is the premiere of the Ultimate Fighter Team Edgar versus Team Penn, 10 o'clock Eastern here on Fox Sports 1. It also streams live on Fox Sports Go. And don't forget to extend that DVR window. Main event could go late here tonight in Quebec. Michael Bisping back to his feet here. Tim Kennedy, though with that body lock from the back position. Trying to chip away with some knees, and Michael trying to do some heel kicks from this position. So it took a couple minutes. Bisping gets back to his feet, only to get canvassed again by Kennedy. And look at this, Kennedy almost in the mount. Michael Bisping was trying to counter that back body lock with a Kimura. Tim Kennedy a step ahead. Well, no secret to the strategy to be employed by Tim Kennedy here tonight. And so far, so good. The takedown has been there. Nice guard retention there from Michael Bisping. Still in the half guard. Might be trying to set up a Kimura from half guard. It can be tough to finish from there. It can be tough to finish the submission, but it can work nicely as a reversal. Might be trying to set that up. And one thing about Tim Kenny that everyone walks away after training with him is how strong he is and how good he is on the mat. And he has Michael Bisping in the mat right now. Yeah, nice transition as he slipped over the legs. Bisping trying to buck him off. 
unable to do so at least to this point as Kennedy maintains the mount. That is some nice hip work there from Tim Kennedy to retain mount there against Bisping. Bisping relinquishes the back. And now Kennedy trying to sink in on a choke. Oh man, Michael, Michael Bisping may be in trouble here. He's doing a good job of fighting wrist, fighting the wrist here. Now he's in a much better position. Excellent defense from Michael Bisping. Tim Kennedy, relentless though on the mat. And posturing up for a nice elbow there. So largely the grappling of Tim Kennedy in the first round. The takedown was there early and a nice start for the underdog. Let's keep it in the All right? Yeah, just like we've been doing. You got it. You got it. You got it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just keep okay. talking to him. Oh, good. Shot again. Yep. Five rounds. Four more. Easy for easy. Deep breaths, Tim. Let's work. Kenny Michael Bisping has been very adaptable. He's made very good adjustments throughout his UFC career. What does he need to do here? Well, he's a veteran. He's been here before. He needs more lateral movement. He needs to keep Kennedy on the outside. And he's got to watch out for those reactive shots of Tim Kennedy. And it will be interesting to hear from Michael Bisping after the fight in terms of that eye injury, the detached retina sustained in retina sustained in training, how that is impacting his vision here on fight night. It's like Tim Kennedy's trying to counter Bisping with that right hand. Trying to counter it. Bisping able to land with the left hand there. Yeah, that's a nice stiff jab from Michael Bisping. And that's what you want to do. You got, you got to take away that jab from Michael Bisping. Once he gets that firing and he finds his range, it can be tough. But look at this, Kennedy landing some big shots. Yeah, Kennedy with the right hand. There's being able to check at least partially that kick. Tim Kennedy really picking his spots here in the striking department. Little push kick there to the midsection. Nice little signature one, two for Michael Bisping. And Able to keep Kennedy on the outside. He saw that takedown coming. And you know, Bisping, very matter of fact, between rounds, for those of you who were in commercial break, he said, yeah, I got the takedown, you know? Now Bisping getting the hands going a little bit. I feel like Kennedy's baiting him into that right hand. I feel like he's leading Michael Bisping in. Might be playing possum a little bit. Kennedy changes levels. Bisping. Trying to use that fence to his advantage. And it'd be a huge win for Bisping here to stay upright. Kennedy just relentless with his pressure and did a great job of going up back to his feet, not staying on his knees, circling away from that counter from Michael Bisping. And now he's got a nice tight body lock here. 
So a win there for Michael Bisping to get separation as we approach the two-minute mark. Beautiful defensive wrestling from Michael Bisping there up against the cage. But Tim Kennedy very slick in that position. Flying knee there from Bisping. But Kennedy appeared to block it. A oh, big right hand cracks flush for Michael Bisping. Yeah, Kennedy has to be careful with those looping shots. It's a beautiful counter there for Michael Bisping. Oh, and nice another left hand as well, yeah. Kennedy keeps switching stances here. So a little bounce in the step of Michael Bisping here in round two. Oh, the left hook is there for the count. Clearly a much better round for Michael Bisping. The ultimate fighter, Team Edgar versus Team Ben, follows us here on Fox Sports 1. It streams live on Fox Sports Go. There's that right hand of Tim Kennedy. Trying to get some respect from, from his striking from Bisping. And perhaps trying to bait Bisping towards the fence to set up a takedown. Left hook for Kennedy, Bisping misses on the return exchange. Yeah, Kennedy really trying to land that, that right hand. He's trying to bait Bisping into that right hand, but Michael Bisping with a lightning quick one, two. So Bisping getting the striking going here in our second round. Round three after this. Big lungs. Better round. My round. Yeah, we took that one. 100% your round. He tried to counter you every time with one shot. Oh, well, certainly a much better round for Michael Bisping, who was utilizing that technique right there, that jab. But it was Tim Kennedy who was also looking to try to counter and land that big right hand. He did it on a couple occasions against Michael Bisping. Nice exchange there, nice combination from Michael Bisping who had Kennedy kind of pinned up against the cage there, but an excellent so round for Bisping. Punch and then hit the takedown. Ten, you will lose. Ten, 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 ten. All right, so let's get positive and retake it. Bend your knees, accelerate, and move your head. Make sure you're stepping back the black line. Thank you, sir. All right, back live in Quebec City and ready for round three of a possible five. Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy in our main event. And when fighting a guy like Tim Kennedy, the thwarting of a takedown is just so vital. I mean, seconds, precious seconds, just tick off the clock as soon as he gets you on your back, and there goes the round, essentially, so. Yeah, and we saw what he did there. I mean, uh, not many people have ever done that to Michael Bisping. Uh, that, oh, huge shot from Michael, from Kennedy, sorry, against Michael Bisping, landed a huge right hand that may have stunned Bisping, and it allowed Kennedy to change levels beautifully and hit that double. So Michael Bisping now forced to work off of the canvas once again. Bisping trying to sit up, trying to create space, trying to create distance so he can get his butterfly guard game going so he can get back to his feet. The Kennedy, just on him like a wet blanket right now, just countering again and again. 
those escapes from Bisping. And you know, as relentless as Tim Kennedy is, there is no lack of effort on the part of Michael Bisping to try to escape. He is constantly in motion. Not at all. And not a lot of people could do this to Michael Bisping. And look at this knee slide dart pass from Tim Kennedy. He's inside control. Two of the more conditioned middleweights on the roster. That cardio figures to be tested here over the fight's final 13 minutes. Tim, Tim Kennedy has shown to be brilliant here on the ground. He's isolated those hips very well. He's countered the escapes of Michael Bisping, and he's kept him on his back. And look at this, Michael Bisping going for that Kimura. And the strength of Tim Kennedy, he just straightens out his arm and escapes. Three career wins by submission for Michael Bisping. Kennedy, Kennedy inside control briefly, only being right back into the half guard of Michael Bisping. Michael Bisping with a lockdown on the right leg of Tim Kennedy, and as he tries to escape back to full guard. And for those of you at home, if it's fatiguing to watch at times, imagine what it's like being in there. Both of these guys really putting out. Tim Kennedy is so technical, very methodical, as he moves from side control into mouth once again, showing his dominance on the mat. Michael Bisping, though, has defended or has prevented any submission attempts, really, from Tim Kennedy thus far, but he's been outpositioned. A seamless and important transition for Tim Kennedy, and now Lynn and flush with a few left hands. Nice escape from Michael Bisping. Let's see if he can cage walk and get back to his feet. That is something that Tim Kennedy has found an answer to. Guys are using the cage so well to get back to their feet. Tim Kennedy has found an answer. Top of the hour here on Fox Sports 1. Coming up next, the premiere of the Ultimate Fighter, Team Edgar versus Team Penn. Don't forget to extend that DVR window. We have gone past the top of the hour. Tim Kennedy again finishing this, this round strong in the mount position as he did in the first. Michael Bisping with an escape now. Kennedy still inside control. So the takedown comes midway through the round, and the rest of the time is spent on the canvas. Not where Michael Bisping wants to be. No, not at all. The first round, Kennedy. Second round, Bisping. Third round, Kennedy once again. So there's the horn, 15 minutes down, two rounds to go. We will stay here. Okay. Deep breaths. Let's take a look at that right hand and level change. Landed a beautiful right hand and a quick level change. High crotch and a double for Tim Kennedy, showing great fluidity in his MMA game. Team Penn. For now, though, the spotlight shines on these two men, Michael Bisping and Tim Kennedy. Great response by Bisping after that first round. We'll see how he responds here in round four.
This thing continues to circle. Kennedy whips on the left hand there. Yeah, Kennedy has to be careful to not wing punches like that. He could get countered by Bisping. But what Kennedy has used so well are reactive shots. He's changed levels so well to the forward motion of Michael Bisping to hit his takedowns. There it is again. Single. He starts low, but really raises up nicely to a pretty body lock. Had it very tight. Michael Bisping countering very well now. And he's out. Nice escape there by Michael Bisping, and a hugely important one given where we're at in this fight. You know, Bisping has been an outstanding volume striker in the UFC. We're seeing less volume here tonight, and perhaps that a, a nod of respect to that takedown of Tim Kennedy. Well, that's exactly what it is. Every time he goes forward, every time he's looking for a combination of his own, Tim Kennedy is using that reactive shot, and that's shutting down his offense. But this is not what Tim Kennedy wants. Tim Kennedy does not want to be pinned up against the cage against Michael Bisping. He needs to be in the open, open mat where he can hit his takedowns. Michael Bisping will tee off on you if you get pinned up against the cage. And Kennedy breathing heavy a little bit. This being seemingly the fresher fighter here as we approach the midpoint of round four. I don't think Kennedy is taking a round off here, but it seems like both guys are kind of, it's one up, one down, one up, one down. And Kennedy able to land a right hand there. And both guys able to land in that exchange. Nothing flat-footed about Michael Bisping here, trying to pick his spots, but it's Kennedy landing. Nice right hand. Got Michael Bisping's attention for sure. Once again, Bisping forced to stuff the takedown. He's able to do it there. Here's a tight body lock for Tim Kennedy. Michael Bisping fights to get that underhook, and he's out. Showing excellent defensive wrestling here, John, from the clinch and up against the cage is Michael Bisping. Bisping able to land with a left hand that clips Kennedy. Nice left hook from Tim Kennedy. It has been there at times. And that is the detached retina side. That is the right eye of Michael Bisping. I'm surprised Tim Kennedy hasn't looked for that hook more often. Maybe fake. There's the right hand. Shortly after Bisping had landed a left, a big right for Kennedy. And Michael Bisping is hurt. Bisping trying to recover here. His legs are a little wobbly there, John. And he did open up a cut on the bridge in the nose of Tim Kennedy. Tim Kennedy definitely hurt him with that right hand. Now he goes to the other side. To that right eye of Michael Bisping. Really an interesting technical chess match here tonight between two of the top 10 Bannon middleweights in the world. Big land there. Big right hand from Tim Kennedy that Michael Bisping just ate. And there's a big right hand to end the combination for Bisping. Yeah, his patented one-two just landed on Tim Kennedy's face and then he goes upstairs with a kick. Right hand there for Kennedy once again. Bisping eats it without issue. Man, Tim Kennedy finding his mark, though. How many more of those right hands can Michael Bisping take? Tim Kennedy needs to finish his combination with that lead hand. There it is. So both guys landing some of their better power shots here in round four as Bisping clips Kennedy on the way in. Let's take a look at those two right hands from Tim Kennedy here. Boom! Lucky for Bisping, it was on his forehead. It definitely hurt him still, but if that landed on the chin, that could have been lights out. Oh, that one landed on the chin. The other one was on the forehead. 
the and thing Michael Pisping right. ate that one, man. Woo! And there you can see Tim Kennedy trying to finish with that lead hand, as I mentioned earlier. Right. Good when stuff you're from going Tim to Kennedy. Hit him, you do beautifully. It's when you stand up straight and back up against the cage. I don't care how tired you get, Tim Kennedy. You follow the game plan. Bend the knees, move the head, bend the knees. You do that for five minutes and you're going to win. Bend the knees, move the head, Tim. I don't want to see standing straight. And I don't want to see you next to the cage. So underrated, that clear, concise message from cornerman in between rounds. Greg Jackson remains one of the best in the business. All right, 20 minutes down, it is the fifth and final round. Huge stakes here at 185 pounds. And Michael Bisping would appear to have some work to do, we shall see. Yeah, I thought he landed a little bit more volume than Tim Kennedy in that fourth round. Tim Kennedy probably landed the heavier shots. Not sure how they're going to score that fourth round, but for Michael Bisping, absolutely needs to go for it. And same goes for Tim Kennedy. You don't know how they scored that fourth. Kennedy needs to get back to work on the mat. Level change off the reactive shot. And immediately following the main event, we remind you it is the premiere of the Ultimate Fighter, Team Edgar versus Team Penn. It is next on Fox Sports 1. There's that stick and move from Bisping, getting his jab going. Kennedy enters off of that right hand into a body lock, and he's got the takedown. A huge takedown for Tim Kennedy, about a minute into the fifth round. Bisping trying to get back to his feet. He does. He needs to get that right overhook, and look at that trip. Pretty little trip from Tim Kennedy to bring the fight right back to the mat. How about that wrestling at Tim Kennedy as he moves right in the mouth using that BJ Penn guard pass. Shut up. Michael Bisping going out the back door, trying to get back to his feet now. Nice scramble from Bisping. Yes, working so hard, Kenny, to try to somehow get this fight back upright. Three minutes and counting now to go in our final round. But Tim Kennedy right on him, John. I mean, this has to be frustrating for Michael Bisping. And with just a little over three minutes to go, he needs to find an answer and get back to his feet somehow. And this is a tough guy to fight when you haven't been in the octagon for a year, as is the case with Michael Bisping. And you have seen the strides in the striking game, as Brandon Gibson suggested. Tim Kennedy has landed some shots uh, that have potentially softened Michael Bisping up. Without a doubt, you know, Tim Kennedy uses his striking so well to set up his takedowns, to set up his guard passes. Everything flows beautifully with Tim Kennedy's MMA game. Michael Bisping showing some frustration now. Halfway through the fifth round, he's got to get back to his feet now. Michael Bisping campaigning. Eve Levine to intervene, and he does. And it did appear, at least in that instance, that Kennedy was taking a breather. Levine stands him up. Michael Bisping gets what he wants. Can he capitalize here? Under two minutes now to go in the fight. Bisping able to land there. But he might need some volume here down the stretch. Nice combination for Bisping there. You know, coming off the long layoff, John, it can be very difficult to find your range out there. And of course, Michael Bisping being the fighter that he is, he's a proud mixed martial artist, said it wouldn't be a factor, but you gotta wonder if it is. Finding his range here against Tim Kennedy has been difficult, and of course, you have to give credit to Tim Kennedy, who has mixed things in very, very well, shown a but nice mixed bag of mixed martial arts. You know, and perhaps the outcome hinges on that fourth round. You know, early takedown in the fifth year for Kennedy, and he lands a big right hand there. But Bisping with a bounce in his step still, and you just have to admire both of these guys 
here in the waning minute of the fight. Both of these guys so well conditioned. Bisping really trying to push the pace now. And yes, for Michael Bisping, nice combination, and he changed levels with Tim Kennedy just in case to be ready for that shot, John. Another nice shot for Bisping. Time to empty the drawers, gentlemen. Bisping thought about the flying knee, and that is how it ends. 25 minutes down between Bisping and Kennedy. The official decision is next. It is UFC Fight Night. It is Fox Sports 1. Stay with us. So decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. The judges score the contest. 49-46, 49-46, and 50-45. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Tim Kennedy. All right, I'm here with your winner, Tim Kennedy, now a perfect 3-0 in the UFC. Congratulations. I thought you you seemed disappointed, my man. What's up? No, I'm furious. I mean, I'm not furious at Mike in any way because, hey, Michael Bisbing, I hit you with my best shots, bro. You fuck, I hit you with my best shots, and you gave them right back to me. I got nothing but respect for you. I've never met you, Tim. I've never said two words for you. I've got nothing but respect for what you've done in the military. You could be the nicest guy on the face of the earth. I understand you're trying to promote a fight. I respect you as a fighter, and listen, what happened has happened, it's done, it's history. Everyone, congratulations. Tim, as far as this victory is concerned, perhaps the biggest win of your mixed martial arts career. Maybe the finish didn't materialize, but you're moving on up at 185 pounds, my man. Yeah, no, man, I, I finished fights. I didn't finish fight tonight. I hit Mike with my best shots, and um, you know, things weren't clicking, so my hat's off to him as an opponent. He, I just have great respect for him. You know, I got a long way to go. I'm still getting met every fight, you know. People said I couldn't stand with anybody. You know, I think I beat him on our feet. And uh, so I'm just going to keep getting better. Well, you took him down and kept him there the way few middleweights have done. We've seen evolution in your striking. Uh, back to the drawing board, but congratulations, man. 3-0 on the UFC. We look forward to your next appearance. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Tim Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Kennedy disappointed in his performance, but on a technical level did what few have done to Michael Bisping at 185 pounds. Took him down kept him there, was dominant with his jiu-jitsu and his positioning, 